Welcome to Bussin' with the Boys. This is a best of episode. If you're, I would assume that usually this is one of our lower viewed ones because, or listened to ones because it is a, 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 a hodgepodge, a combination, compilation. There we go. Dirty compilation. You know the compilation where, where, you, where your brain goes to, it goes to that search bar in those X rated, on those X rated sites. But um, this is a best of. We're kind of recapping, showing clips throughout the entire year. It's been a hell of a year for the boys. We cannot thank you guys enough, sincerely. Like, it is so cool that four years ago, from a gravel parking lot, using our phones as the Wi-Fi, as a hotspot on Wi-Fi, we had to go, we had to steal electricity from a, from a, like, basically campsite for where our RVs are to get electricity through, um, through a generator to kind of do all of this. And we sat out in 90 something degree weather. We were in the middle of the summer and now we are in a warehouse, but to our tier ones who have followed us the entire time, you guys know the drill. Thank you so much. If you just joined us this year, if you're even new watching right now, make sure you are subscribed on all the channels that helps us out tremendously. And uh, just to throw some numbers to flex a little bit, but also show um, what, we've all kind of built together with Bus and Nation, the tier ones, twos, threes, everybody. We've added on YouTube, if you're watching right now, again, make sure you're subscribed, but we've added about 175,000 subscribers in this year alone, which is massive, man. And uh, I want to say our views in totality on our YouTube channel is roughly 128 million on the year, 125 million. Don't want to shortchange us a few million, but top 10 sports podcasts on Spotify. Like it, it's the gratitude is through the roof. We would not be here without you guys. So sincerely, thank you. This is a best of, uh, you're going to get recaps from, we've had people on, uh, like Derrick Henry at the top of the year. Hopefully we get the boy again. Once the season ends, we had on Matt rule when he got fired from the Panthers and then hired, uh, by Nebraska to lead the boys to the promised land. Yes. We just landed Dylan Rayola, the number one QB in the nation. Uh, Dave Portnoy, Jeffree Star, one that jumped us up in a lot of numbers with the Jeffree Star episode due to the fun shenanigans that Taylor was having. Um, Christian McCaffrey, we landed a big fish. Dana White, that relationship has blossomed. We get the, the UFC stuff. The Dana White episodes have been great. Kirk Cousins dropped in. Uh, we had him on, Burt and Shane, Burt Kreischer, Shane Gillis, two of the biggest comics doing it right now. We had on a hey, bucket list for your boy, Nostalgia, Nickelback. We had them on. We did a bad, bad Friends collab with Andrew Santino and Bobby Lee. Jelly Roll and Bunny, that was a massive one. Having Bunny on, Jelly Roll's wife, he's obviously somebody who comes on often. Josh Allen, Travis Kelsey, Mike Vrabel jumped on for the second time in his career on Bustin' with the Boys. Tom Segura, we talk a lot of college football. Foster Moreau talks about his uh, journey with cancer, having to stop the NFL, come back in the NFL. C.J. Stroud made an appearance this year. Max Crosby, he's a recurring guest. Caleb Presley, we got the boy on, uh, one of my friends. And I will say good friend. He is a good friend of mine now. Uh, we got to interview, uh, Taylor got to interview Steve-O. We are going to have a flashback from a lot of uh, cool episodes. I hope you guys enjoy. I hope you're having a tremendous holiday season. Uh, again, Christmas just got done. I hope you enjoyed all of your presents, your gift giving. Uh, any family shit that's going on, hopefully that stuff has been mended. Um, have a happy new year. Again, we're going to knock 2024 into a new ceiling. Um, but thank you guys. Enjoy this episode of the best of from Bussin with the boys. Before the best of episode, our presenting sponsor, shout out Chevy Silverado, our 2021, 2022, 2023 presenting sponsor. Uh, maybe they weren't 2021, but our 2024 presenting sponsor, the Chevy Silverado, the new family with unstoppable grit. They are the official partners of Bus with the Boys um, and specifically the Chevy Silverado ZR2 family. The first ever Silverado heavy duty ZR2 joins the franchise to make the Chevy ZR2 the only truck brand with a full lineup of trucks ready for wherever your off-road adventures takes you. Uh, exclusive Multimatic DSSV dampers, 14 available cameras. The Silverado ZR2 and the HD ZR2 is a family and trucks with commanding and unstoppable grit. Head to Chevy.com to check out the Chevy Silverado and the family of Chevy ZR2s, the official truck of the boys. Enjoy the episode. It's like he wanted to smoke the whole game, which you love to see in a corner. Yeah. Like when you know your corner, because that's that's like the hardest position to play, period. He's has left tackle, yeah, absolutely. I think that's very debatable. I think corner, I, th I would say corner, then left tackle. 
in my professional opinion. Yeah. What do I know? Nine years in the league. Um, whoa, whoa, what? What is that? Practice squad one year. What does that mean? You trying to take my practice squad year away? Putting it, put, put paying my paying my dudes on practice squad. What do you know about practice squad, big dog? I don't know shit about practice squad. I know you don't. <laughs> exactly. But you're saying that's not an earned year. Like that's not a year. You're, you're like not kind of. You spent a year in the league that year. So you're trying to you're trying to say like. I got eight to your nine is what you're trying to come up with. Is that what you're trying to do? You're about to have eight to my ten, homie. Are you playing it? You playing for sure? Huh? I have ten. I don't know what you're talking about. You had ten. Your year ten was there. Like I, It was there. I was called A. I, I don't disagree with that. but I, I was there. I was there. You were there. I was there. I'm with you. Don't touch me, dog. Don't fucking you point that bad at me. You say in eight years? That's fucking crazy. That's crazy. That's, that's, that's hey, crazy. And that's just the way the cookie crumbles, buddy. That's just how it is. You don't think? You no, think that, I know, You think your bro. practice squad of your counts? Absolutely. All right. You're trying to say that you can't roll in the practice squad year? Like, you can say, I, like, I played nine years in the I league. I played, like, that practice squad year, week 17, one tack long kickoff. Got activated. I just didn't get three credited games. So I played in a game in, in 2013. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, but that's crazy that you're trying to steal year eight. Here's what Carol I want. Like, is officially trying to steal year eight, and I will not sleep until I find my revenge in some hey, way. It's gonna be a long 2023, brother. The insecure ones are always so loud. The insecure ones are always so loud, dude. Listen, you were on practice squad your first year. You got nine years in the league. You spent nine years in the league, no, and you no, had no, year no, ten. No, no, you no. had hey, your I ten. It. Trust me, I heard it. I heard it. I heard eight. We have. We're literally on camera right now. It's like I heard, You'll have I heard it forever. The I heard the eight. I said eight. I heard the eight. I heard the eight. Don't try to say nine. I know you said eight, but I'm saying don't say nine now. I don't want to hear nine. We should be saying ten. ten. I know it's ten. You were trying to say eight. Don't. You were trying don't to say eight. Your... You were trying to say eight. Don't fucking point your... <laughs> Look at that. Uh oh. Someone's working out. <laughs> Hey, for real, every time Will and I do wrestle, he wins. Let's get back to what we were talking about here. What the real news story should be is fucking Will Compton attacks a, a victim of an ACL injury. <laughs> My fucking hat go. That was 11 weeks ago or 12 weeks ago, bro. That was 12 weeks ago, you're right. He's fucking... What trying to do? Fucking... Whatever I can. It smells like butthole on your fingers. You've been fingering dudes? Yeah, I've been fingering. <laughs> You've been fingering dudes? <laughs> Get this fucking thing figured out, boss. Go fix this shit. <laughs> oh, bro. You gotta go up in the middle this way. You guys can tell that we've been working out, dude, two days. Will, take your right hand up. I'm sweating. <sighs> Anyways. Yeah, you were on P-Squad for a year. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I know. Proud of that P-Squad year. You're so lucky I couldn't get up. You could get up. I chose not to get up because my knee. I got, I got another year to play. Because <laughs> I can. You need to get that 10th year. Huh? You need to get that 10th year. Why? Because we're both in I nine. can only do what the fuck I want to do. I don't need what? to do nothing. No, I'm saying you should. Huh? I'm saying you should. I want to. I'll play. That's hot. Yeah. Where should I go play? Wherever you want. What landing spot do you want me to go play in the NFL next year? So you're you're in Cleveland. You were on active at Cleveland. So I was the two all year in Cleveland. Well, I want you to um, talk about Cleveland. Yeah, I want to hear about Cleveland. I want to hear about Cleveland. Okay. You know what I mean? You seem like a, a normal guy, and then you're paired. You're in the same room as a super horny guy in Cleveland. <laughs> I want to find out like how that dynamic works with yeah. you guys. Did he come off that horny, or you're like, oh, he might not be as horny as they're saying. <laughs> Oh, he got the rookies a masseuse. Each person yeah, got a masseuse. Yeah, yeah. You know, Christmas presents. Yeah, so the yeah, whole Christmas line presents, here. Yeah. Yeah. Here's a massage therapist. Yeah. I can't. I cannot. Uh, I can't speak on that. He's a, he's a he's normal. Kind of one dude. of those things. He's the horniest yeah. dude you've ever met. <laughs> <laughs> we all got our. You know what I mean. Yeah, everyone, everyone has a horny our, guy. Five horniest horniest guy, guy I've ever met. met. There's two. Mike Campanero and Rob Muji. Those are the two horniest people I've ever horny met. Horny boys. Horny boys. I feel like I feel like Chase Rice would be up there. Chase Rice was like a horny boy. Limited sample size. Yeah. He performed in my golf tournament last year. How horny was he? We uh, so we, 
<laughs> I am going to give an honorable mention. My honorable mention will be the same as Will's. It's going to go to Pluto. When I was in third grade, that motherfucker was a planet. Yes, now sir. all of a sudden, you're trying to tell me it's not a planet. Take out my schooling that I had. F*** you, school. That is a planet. And I, I think it was done wrong. I think it was very disrespectful what they did to Pluto. And I think Pluto needs its day. Pluto needs to be talked about more. Free Pluto, dude. Because this is out in the confines. I, when yeah. I was Googling it literally had the eight planets, and they made the planets big enough to where they had to stuff out Pluto's little ass. Like, put Pluto back in the f***ing image, and just put Pluto, dude, and just go from there. I don't want to cut you off, but Pluto hasn't gone one lap around the Earth in your life. I mean, one lap around the sun in your what life. What does that mean? I mean, it's like, it's not a planet. No, no, no. He's not a follower. He's not a follower. a follower. It beats by its own drum. It's not a planet. Oh, y'all just want to go in circles all day? I'm out here doing shit. You know what I'm saying? Let me be. the longest yeah. time to get around. You see how far the mother out there? You can't even see it. Yeah. We barely see Jupiter sometimes, that big piece of shit. Is time travel real? So uh, my time traveling piece is, it's like, so like time is the fourth dimension in our world. So like you had, if you were in a two two dimensional world. Oh, I'll try no, 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 no one laughed. This is unbelievable. Uh, if you're in a 2D world, like if you're 2D world, like a picture book, paper, right? right? You got two dimensions. Yep. The third dimension is time. So it's like the ability. I, the fourth, I thought you said the fourth dimension. We're in a 2D world now. We went back. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So like you have a book, it's 2D. So the third dimension would be time. So like the ability to have like just flip the page pages and like go from a different spot in the book so like in a, our three-dimensional world time is the fourth dimension so if you could time travel you have to be four-dimensional in a three-dimensional world okay hold on yeah okay so i understood what you said kind of yeah. but i don't think you answered the question so he said it's time. Point, i don't think it's time travel is real at the moment because i feel like i saw like one thing one theory is like if time travel is real like time travel can't be real until the day someone creates a time machine because then you can time travel backwards and forwards to that point but until someone creates a time machine you can't time travel to an area of time where there's no time machine. Would it be fair to say that Georgia is the king of the SEC? No, bro. Right now. No, bro. They they are playing great football. They are the two-time defending Wait, champs. The season's over. They no, won. I'm saying, but I'm saying for the last two years, they've they they they've been outstanding. Okay, how about but this? I'm saying, we, we, we have sustained that standard for 10 years. For 10 years. I just think when somebody's on top and been on top for so long, they can't wait for somebody to just come in and just take over. Uh, but, 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 Alabama's ball. not going nowhere. I'm I'm sorry to say. But we just right, had no more recruit yeah, class okay, this hey, year. Hey, hey, how about this? How about this? Is Kirby Smart the best head coach in the SEC? Bro, stop, stop, bro. No. Who who is Kirby Smart under before he went to Georgia? I'm assuming Nick well, Saban. Just Nick you were assuming Nick Saban? <laughs> 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 they know I don't I'm have assuming. They know I'm assuming. Hey, just because Nick Saban's lived longer doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Nick Saban's really just old. That's why he's successful. Yeah. Think so? I mean, it seems like he's I mean, really fallen off last year. He's been guys' logic. Since the start of this decade. Would it be fair to say that in 2022, Georgia was the king of the SEC. Oh, no. no. I can't live with that, no. I, I do want to speak on, you said, having two Bama backs in the top two. Proud of Josh. He worked for it. Went crazy. I got to uh, watch his game against the 49ers, which is probably the best defense in the league. He was yeah. killing them. He, he didn't crazy. have a lot of yards, but he was going crazy. Very proud of Josh, man. And, you know, I think he earned everything he got this year. I know they didn't pick up his fifth-year option this past year, so I know that was motivation. Yeah. But proud of Josh, man. And RBU, Bama built. Roll with Ty. You know what it is. Do you think he'll be at the Raiders? Najee next Harris. King. Doing this thing. Oh, yeah. Najee is Bond, too. Mark, yeah, you guys do have a lot of good Mark yeah, Ingram. Alabama is RB. holding it down for a while. But yeah, man. Proud of them boys, man. You know how we rock out. Now, I do have a very important, this might be the most important question. This might be Ooh. not the rowback, but this is definitely a massively important question. Sure. And the way you answer it is going to change the trajectory of our friendship. I don't know how you <laughs> and Will are going to be. The fourth game this season, you will play, you will be playing the Michigan Wolverines in Lincoln, Nebraska. Now, there are talks that last year, Michigan won the first inaugural Bustin' Bowl. Official or unofficial, that's the argument that people are putting at it, putting up with it. Are you willing to sign papers saying that Mich or Nebraska will be playing for the first official Bustin' Bowl against Michigan next year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll sign that. I think mine's gonna be my honorable mention, mm. tip of the cap to the moon. The moon emoji, oh. the dark moon emoji. I feel like when you throw that, if you add that to your bag and you throw that in there, it throws people off. Like, what does it even mean by that? But it's funny looking. You just randomly throw that in a conversation. I'm telling you, it's good. Add it to your bag, boys. My tier three is going to be the water. The mm. spots? Yeah, we got to stay hydrated out there. You got to stay hydrated out there. Keep that H2O up. My tier two, big vegetable guy, the eggplant. I like the eggplant. I'm going to go with the eggplant for my two. My tier one. This is this this emoji's been with me all time since since birth. The eyes. 
You shoot the eyes. The eyes are killer. Yeah. It's all right. You can, I, you I can just keep it in, okay. in the draft. All right. Okay. This is okay. In the draft, okay. Okay. Dude. But eyes, tier one. Eggplant, big vegetable guy, tier two. Could be corn, you know, could be corn, could be corn. Big big cob energy, that's a big thing we're all about on Saturdays at Memorial Stadium. Uh, but my tier, and my tier three, water. That's my tier, that's my tier talk. Brought this up. So I, yesterday, my D-line coach from Eastern called me. You know, we're just chopping it up, talking talking ball and whatever. Somehow he brings it up. He's like, yeah, you know, you know, it's hilarious. You know, we, we've been interviewing a new D-line guy because he's going to move to linebackers there at Eastern and not, they're getting a new D-line coach. And he was like, Coach Creighton, my head coach, he's, he started this thing in, in his interview process. He puts up five high school players film and shows the D-line coaches and has them rank the, the D-linemen. He puts like, whatever, one of the guys they're trying to recruit, he puts my film in there from my high school, like when I was in high school. And he puts like, you know, four other random guys. He said, so my D line coach, my old D line coach told me yesterday, he said every single coach ranks me at like fourth or fifth from high school no tape, way and i'm dying laughing and they don't know that it's you they though, don't right? know it's and then they're like yeah you know that's max crosby right and they're like and they all get awkward yeah but, that's gotta like, be a tough it's deal. just awkward but you, you just gotta sit there in that meeting and go i'm not getting this job yeah, am I? Fuck. yeah. it's over hey, what a uh, Richie is like one of the best friends to have no literally bro. He's a, he is an incredible human being absolutely it, what a massive fucking dog. He's a, he's a big boy. <laughs> now he stood up and everybody can see him too. Everybody's like, holy shit. <laughs> Derek, come on, buddy. He, literally, he like take my life any second. Oh, anytime you want it. Max, I, I like, I came in the house before I came in the house and Max is like, hey, just walk straight. Don't really, don't look down at him or make any facial expressions. And I'm just kind of like walking the house and Max just starts laughing. He's like, yo, he's not going to do nothing. But the no, dude's fucking look massive. At him, look hey, at watch him. the wires. Watch the wires, Dirk. This is a good time. Mine is simply a well-timed fart. When you hit a well-timed fart, like, you know, and I just said a well-timed, when you got that perfectly timed fart, whether you're with your boys, you know, maybe with your girl, who knows? I don't know what, what rattles your cage with that one. But when you're around the boys and somebody has a well-timed fart, bro, there's, you just have a good laugh. Like, it's a good chuckle. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's even more than a chuckle, but the vibes surrounding a well-timed fart, especially when you, when you got a lot of people, too. Yeah. Maybe it gets a little quiet. You know, you romp it a little bit. I don't know. I just a, a good fart goes a long way you with do, me. You do. You got some good gas. Yeah. You got some yeah. good time gas. Yeah. A good fart goes a long way with me. Yeah. So that's my shout out. No free shout out. <laughs> How do you think uh, Barstool changes? With the move to Chicago. I mean, obviously, there'll be different offices. I don't know the exact people going, Dan's Chicago. Dan's a workhorse. So I'm sure Chicago will be great. And Kevin will be in New York. There's still a ton of business people. But I don't I don't think it'll change all that much. Probably me leaving almost is more of a change than, like, Dan bringing Chicago guys because I'm, like, the uh, I'm the jerk. Like, and, and I mean that in a way that it's like I stir the pot when I'm there. Like, right. I, so. Content, you're yeah. around, you're in the mix a lot. And, yeah. and it's generally like creating like controversy out like not you know being the boss that's like what'd you do that what'd you do that bringing someone in that doesn't happen as much if i'm not there anyways so i think the content will be pretty similar with dan taking his crew because there's not as much of the like the frank the tank shit that he did the other day that would have been a much bigger story probably if i was there he went to the dolphins game yeah, and then he left and then he left yeah. and like what had the potential to be an unbelievable ending it didn't but like that that if i'm there i would have harped on that for like a week kind of dies down so uh, i don't think it'll change much do you ever think like think back on the time when you sold 51 percent to churn in like you could have went about it another way to to keep that ownership like okay maybe i can go on my own and hire a ceo no because we are at a time when uh something had to change i think dan kevin were a little bit fed up with me i guess at the time i fed up's the right word it's a band that had been together a long time. And I think they were look because we were just kind of cruising and I was starting to make pretty good money. They're making okay money. Not like they are now, but it's like, what's the next step for us? Like, you know, I started it. I, I predated those guys by 10 years, maybe eight years. Like I was doing the newspaper. So I had been at it a lot longer than, so when they started, there was a very clear hierarchy. Like I was by far the biggest and they were coming along. And by the time that, had been sold, they were all both, you know, big names in their own right. And continue, obviously you see them now. So it's like, all right, we gotta, we don't want to be making, you know, a couple hundred grand. I don't even remember what it was at the time. What's the next level? And it made sense. Okay, we can take a jump and, you know, all make out. And we, like, fortunately, there's another boss coming in versus Dave swinging the sword. We're all in the same. Yeah, game. it's just, it was a clear path for them to get where they've 
where we've gotten, which they're all very soon going to be like multi, multi, multi millionaires because, so I owned a hundred percent of the company. And when we did that first deal, I just sliced it off. It was part of, it's like, all right, here's percentages for you guys. So you all own now parts of Barstool. So mm -hmm. if we get to this next sale, because churning came in and it was very clear, our goal is to sell it. Like we want to build it and then sell it. So they got the percentage. It's like, all right, we're all now trying to get to that next step, which was the pen, which is the big transaction that made them all like every, you know, everything worth it. It's like everything we did was worth it. How does everything change with pen coming in? Nothing. It won't change. So the, the, the pen deal was similar to turning. They're like, you, they did deep dive. They're like, we're comfortable with you guys. We trust you guys. Jay, the CEO is awesome. If he has any issues, he calls me and he, in, we never really totally disagree. Like he always, every conversation is like, Hey, can you do this or whatever? He prefaces like you do what you want, but like it would help if we did this. I've never had an issue with anything he said. Um, and I would, you know, you can't guarantee it. I don't think I would ever sell to somebody that I didn't feel like totally get us. Like I, have you guys met Jay, I assume, obviously. Have you? I don't think we have met Jay. Um, uh, was he at the, uh, upfronts? I don't know. Who he was, was he in Arizona? Arizona. Arizona, the Arizona. No, ball. he wasn't. No, no. no I don't think we have too. met him then. Like, be at the up like uh, just a like normal like blue collar background. Worked in Vegas. Went to Harvard. Played football at Harvard. He's just like a good guy. Like you, you again. You can't always anticipate agreeing with everybody, but as long as you think someone's like rational and gonna listen, yeah, it's good. So not much has changed. And the second transaction was done. Like a lot of people have gotten a little confused. I don't say confused when. Turn and sold to Penn, it was always this sequence of events. We're going to buy this percentage, and then three years later, the rest. I don't think they want to buy it all right away because they're government regulated. They didn't want to like scare people right away. So they wanted to ease into it. But this was always all the way to the price. Like everything was built in three years ago. So nothing is really changing with this. No, did you do, when you did the, the sale from three years ago, did you escalators? Like, hey, if Barstool starts reaching yes. these numbers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, they, uh, but they were all within restrictions. So you couldn't go above a certain number. We're at the highest number you can go, but yeah. it was always, you can't go above this and you can't go below this. So it was pretty wedged in. But there's there's going to be no change as far as like the hierarchy stuff goes, like within the offices. You know what I mean? Like Penn takes over all of no, Barstool. No, Because it really, like I said, for lack of better words, it was already that hierarchy was like already there. So mm -hmm. if Penn came down, like, we really want you to do this, theoretically, Chernin could have been like, we still own the majority of the company. So no, but they knew they were selling it to Penn. So it really hasn't changed. Like I, Penn doesn't tell us what to do on the content. It's more, I think, back end starting now to move forward, like migrate systems over accounting, things like that, but not the content's pretty pretty separate like they know why they bought it i mean there's stuff like you guys for example where i can't just be like yes like i know that's like a big ticket item for us i gotta make sure everybody knows that could we have maybe sl like slid that in even if they're like no 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 yeah i guess we could if i wouldn't because like what, yeah. what do you want to start a relationship what, like what, how did you get into put do a position where you were titled as not a snitch not a position position just time in the game yeah. <laughs> just getting reps like after reps, rap ho. No. Um, yeah, I've just, I've just never kissed and told. I had a lot of rumors about me. Like, mm. everyone thought I fucked Kanye a year ago. Yeah, Mitch which brought that up. Awful. Mitch, Mitch's girlfriend is, a, is a huge awful fan of yours. rumor, right? Did you Ugh. fuck Kanye? No, he's so short. Ugh. Did he try to fuck you? No comment. That's all I needed. <laughs> Clip it, boys. <laughs> and the interview is over. <laughs> yeah. Too short. Really? What am I going to do with that floss? I don't know. <laughs> Come on. Stop. I might into all the other bullshit. I think. What other bullshit? The they and them. Yeah. And all that extra shit that we added during the pandemic. Because everyone mm. was so bored on their fucking houses. They just started to make up more shit and more, more shit. More stuff, more stuff. Yeah. That's where the conservatives like me because I'm just real. Yeah, you There's do no, have a conservative vibe to you. You're not them. You're trans. You're male or you're female. And you're standing and on that. so mad when I say that. How are you with they? What the fuck does that mean? It's stupid is what it is. Yeah. But you need someone like me that looks like me to say it. Because if you say it, it turns into you're homophobic. You hate trans people. You hate gays. And it's just how you feel. You don't hate anyone. You just... 
think it's stupid. There is this rumor, this uh, rumbling going around around in the NFL community that some <sighs> gentleman is with Jeffree Star on his way to Wyoming. Right. You take a photo. I believe the first photo was this man's ankles. <laughs> With his with his vans. His ankles aren't that strong, but he runs fast. Okay. Yeah. Well, that checks off my box. I am. <laughs> that is one. Now he's the, a fast runner. Yeah. So, <laughs> so during this, like, I, now the only reason why I find this out is people yeah. are tagging us Tara Lawan in Wyoming right so now. Sorry. No, I loved it. This is this this got us to this point now, We're here, which I think yeah. is incredible. We're in Arizona, and I was already coming to the Super Bowl. I've been before. Okay. I love it. It's fun. There's always fun parties. A lot of excitement. So this is a great opportunity. This is a, this is a great opportunity. Yeah. So. Everyone thought that I was sleeping with you, but I'm really fucking one of your friends. Okay. That's the short version. That's the short version. There's a few other ones I felt really bad for. Sorry, Cole. Um, oh, no. Poor Cole. Cole. If I know who Cole is. I, Cole who? Is that the dude that's tight end for the Bears? I thought that was him. Really? Yeah. Maybe it is. It's not. It's not. It's not. I'm just kidding, Cole. It's not Can you. Give me a letter. Oh, stop. Come on, dude. The world's going to explode. I, that's all I want. But poor Cole. I was going to reach out to him and say sorry, but then what if he actually wants to hang out? Then that's a dub for you, and if you're interested. Mm. What does he look like? Can we pull him up? Is mm. he? We'll see about that. Yeah, I saw Buddy's tummy when you <laughs> when you spo- uh, when you posted that photo. I was like, Buddy was jacked up. Whoever you were with in Wyoming, and he said he knew me. Mm-hmm. That makes it all so much more interesting. He's we'll, like, we'll tell him in Cabo. Uh, yeah, yeah, Cabo. The, the scouting report on Will hard nosed, instinctive in terms of re- reading blocking patterns. Like you know, the pooler goes, Will's gone. He's off the spot. And he's coming downhill. Undersized, but we'll take. Yep. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Limited athletically. Undersized. <laughs> but what we always look for, do they, do they, does he have a willingness to take on? Like Will wasn't scared to go down and put his face mask on somebody. Not the longest guy in terms of arm length here. Yeah. We're not talking about 34 inch arms, you know? So, but, so there, there was physicality, but there was a tendency to get caught up on some blocks. He, he had to win with his instincts, being able to read kind of the, read the play, read the formation, get off the spot quick. Short area quickness was not bad with this guy now in a short space. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about going, but he had some short, on, short area quickness yeah. and explosiveness to beat blockers to the point, get downhill, good rap tackler, get guys to the ground. You want him out on first and second down. Didn't really see a big role on third down in terms of getting in space and really covering. He'd use his instincts and zone to be able to get in the windows and squeeze on guys and take guys out of the play. And on the kicking game, oh, hell, on, hell on wheels. Hell on oh. wheels, brother. Hell on oh. wheels. But the college character, that's all the adjectives. Lunch pail guy. Lo- you're going to love him in the room. Strength staff yeah. loves this yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. Date your daughter type. Oh, you know, like, I don't know about that one. Gonna be, He's going to be every coach's dream. Going to work hard, give you everything you got, bring guys along with him. So he had all the intangibles too. What's uh, what's Taylor's scouting report? Oh, Taylor's overall I'll ask... scouting report, to be honest with you, it stayed pretty consistent since the time that he's been in the league. Now, when he first got in, his technique wasn't very good. And so he improved a lot from a technical standpoint. But Taylor, exceptional athlete for his size. Is Rare he, athlete yeah. for his size. All like the ability to, like the lateral agility, the speed to kick and get to the... the what, I'm using scouting terms now, but to get to the junction point, ability to play in the screen game, pull, run, get to the second level because of how athletic he was, was unique. And I think the thing that Taylor did as a left tackle that not a lot of left tackles is the nastiness that he played with. Because you, like back in the day when I came up, like the run blockers all played right tackle. And then like the Vanessa kind of softer guys played left tackle. But Taylor really like as a run blocker, even though he wasn't the most powerful guy, like he was trying to like demolish people. And so he brought that like that physical kind of right tackle mentality as a run blocker he brought it to left tackle and i think that's what a lot of people were attracted by he has this like tenacity and this nastiness but he's this athletic kind of finished beyond the whistle you know pretty guy in terms of his skill set so that was all unique and that was all what made him a first round draft pick who is dr uh not dr uh mr cervantes cervantes okay he was the economics teacher and he would go he was a unique teacher like he would go and like meander in the hallways like 10 minutes after class started like the whole class was kind of just sitting hanging out and waiting for him and the final it was uh economics class the final he left on his desk and i took a picture of it and i sent it to everybody in the class so everybody in the class got a hundred percent on the class and i'm on the bus going to graduation Gotta and uh that. uh cervantes is like the seat in front of me goes hey I know what you did. I was like, what are you what are you talking about? He was like, I know there's a reason why everyone got an A in the class. Like, just go and cut me a check when you make it to the NFL. And I was like, you got it, bub. There you go. I, cut him the check? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. I have a personal question for you. Yep. My senior year of high school. Yep. I had a 35% in my Spanish class. I told you I was not going to go take the final. I'm going to have to go work construction. And you were like, just go take the test. And I took the test and I put C for every single answer. And I got a 75 in the class. 
<laughs> How did that happen? These are old jobs. Remember, this is old this is long statute time of limitations. Ago. Long ago. I don't even re- I don't I don't remember how it all went down. I do remember. Um, I'll, I'll digress a little bit. I do remember when you came into Chaparral and first seeing that transcript that was put across my desk. One point six GPA, and it was just brutal. You want to yeah. talk about just beat up? I mean, like. I wondered if he actually went to school for the first two years because there was just it's littered with Fs. Dude, it was so It's bad. basically Taylor Lewan, your assignment as he comes Oh, yes. In. Oh, well, yeah. Were you really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I want. I don't want to turn this into like a podcast about me, but I do want to learn more about my childhood with you. Where are you at in the argument of golf being a sport or not? Man, I'm like very middle. Like, I don't, it's active. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it does warm my heart when, like, my friends who are real athletes, like the the, the no argument athlete, uh, when they go play golf and then they tell me the next day like their back hurts and their shoulders are hurting. I'm like, see, this shit's fucking dangerous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's it's probably not. I think if we had to carry our own clubs, I would consider it a sport. It, yeah, we're tiptoeing the line. We're we're definitely like people bat dog cheerleading and say that's not a sport, and they did it way more athletic than we are. So like no, if they're not even if they're not even getting bag. approved, then like we are, shouldn't be approved fully yet. We're we're gaining on it, but I, I wouldn't like you guys are like there's a humongous difference between like football and baseball and basketball and then like golf. Like this, it's noticeable. Just the eye test would tell you that like, we're not doing a whole lot, but it is active. It's harder than you think, but yeah, it's definitely not, not rig- rigorous enough out to consider like a full blown sport, but we're in the sport family. Just cause how you feel about everyone starting to throw all that alcohol onto the, so I, I like the green, like how it, it was like chaos. Life. It was a little much. So basically they had to change it this year. It, I'm not, I'm not going to go out here and say it's like life and death dangerous, but I mean, people are chucking, you know, cans at you that are full of beer and like, you know, Colt, my buddy Colt got hit with one last year and he's like, didn't feel good. Uh, I don't mind it. It's, it's crazy. I like this. This is good for golf. I don't think every week, but it's good for golf but they are putting cups in, in solo cups this year so if you do chuck them at least like we're not gonna get beaned but um i don't know i like it it's fun it's it's chaos it's crazy so tim mcgraw's daughter went to stanford so we got to know the mcgraws a little bit me and my friend group she's an awesome girl and uh we had dinner a family friend of ours know them pretty well so he invited us over for dinner when we were at stanford but the mcgraws him and faith hill were, were going and so we're like all right cool we'll, we'll head over and the whole way on the car ride they're like dude just don't say any Friday Night Lights lines. Like, don't say, like, be professional, whatever. Within five minutes, someone drops a fork and my idiot buddy, like, like it's like, don't punch the president. Goes, can't hold on to the fork? Can't hold on to the fork? Oh, oh, no, dude. Oh, dude. Oh, my God. I was like, no, no. And he started laughing too, which was good, but oh my God, it was anything so to funny. It? He laughed, he just laughed. And Tim McGraw's one of those dudes you see and you're like, that's really Tim McGraw. Jacked. Is yeah, he? Ripped Jacked. up. Dude, I saw him at uh, when uh, I tore my ACL in 2020, and they were playing the Ravens. And the suite next to me, he was there. And yeah. someone like kind of tapped me last. I kind of gave him like one of those. And he like looked at, gave me the head nod. I was like, we're f***ing tight, dude. <laughs> we're boy. boys, brother. You mentioned it being um, like it was hard at times. Like what were the hard times? And when I say hard. How the old man was tough on you? It's like hard as a, you know, when you're a kid. Like, it, it was, like yeah. now it's not hard. Taping like, balls to you? Hard as you could hold on to it? No, Maybe like, you appreciate it looking We back would get now, grounded but... for real if you got jersey tackle. Like, I'm talking yeah. like seven, eight years old. If you got jersey, you know, you wear the big jerseys. Yeah. Like, you, you get grounded if you get jersey tackle. Oh, really? Tackle so at seven, seven, eight years old. You're grounded. Home Depot tape, that double-sided tape. I'm eight. And double-side tape my pads. This is, you know, they didn't have the Velcro. And double-side tape my pads. I never got I was running through everybody. No jersey tackles ever. You know, he would cut, like, certain slits in the pant to give you, like, more knee flexion, like, back in the day. At eight years old. doing, like, dynamic warm-ups, dude. No sodas. Bedtime, 7.30. Oh, yeah, like, he would take, they would take our phone until I left for high school at, like, a time. He's going to hate me for saying all this, but it worked. <laughs> if he listened, yeah, I mean, if he, I don't know if he's going to listen to it, but, but yeah, like, that's, that's how it was. Like, we, we you know, and diet was always important. Sleep was always important. Now, we were kids, man. Like, we could go over to the friend's house. It wasn't like anything like that. But when it came to sports and to school, it was, hey, if you want to, to be here, here are the things that you need to do. You go and buy it, it ships to like what? 20 or not not it doesn't ship to like 18 states hopefully you're yeah. part of the positive 32. note it ships to most of the states and that's yeah 33 oh, yeah you're all you're already we got 51 no. states yeah we have 50 states my god will Sorry. 50 stars 13 bars these colors don't run you should know that i know but when pl- when, the, when pl- not gonna- gonna go well for you when, what are the bars hey what, what are the bars mean on the flag the the representation of what the you know 
the fucking representation. What are the what are the bars? What are the bars on the what flag of the United States flag? Mean, hold on, I want him no, to answer no, this. I, my hands are sweating. <laughs> what do they mean? These weak is there one right there too? The stars. That's all the number of states. Yes, that's good. What do the bars mean? The uh, initial thirteen. The what? initial thirteen. That's my fucking board. Thirteen one. Oh. States, colonies? Yeah, yeah colonies. Yeah. I mean, that's what I'm getting nervous. Thank God, bro. I know. It's colonies, correct? Bro, I'm about to... Okay, because I do want to make that clear. Will just threw in states, colonies. I know we had a little deal right there. Like, what was it, 1776? What's that? 1774. No, you... you 1776. Have... July 4th, 1776. Yeah, brother. Like, I can sit here just being a, a, a fan... Like watching McGregor over the years, like trying to hold some of these situations hostage until he gets whatever he wants. You know, he he, he doesn't really do that. It, it might appear like he does that. You know, Connor, I always hate to compare anybody to Ali, but I always compare him to Ali because he's so good at playing the mental game. He really is. With, 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 with opponents and stuff like that. But as far as us as a business, I mean, I look at Connor as a great partner. He, he's not one of those guys, believe me, I've dealt with some bad guys in the past that will do dirty to try to hold you up for more money and stuff like that. He's not that guy. Connor's not that guy. Yeah. You have a story that you can share about some guys who would do some dirty Tito Ortiz. Shit. Tito Ortiz was the worst with that. He was the worst. Why do you think the UFC gets so much flack for not paying their fighters? Because I don't tell anybody what they get paid. I don't tell anybody what they get paid, and guess what? Neither do the fighters. There's yeah. no gag order in place. It, these fighters could come out and say exactly what they make. I, yeah. just had a, I just had a situation recently. I'll tell you who it was. It was Paulo Costa. He, he's a lunatic he acts like a lunatic and uh he came out publicly and kind of said what we what we offered him yeah it was the furthest thing from the truth really it wasn't true and now this was a while ago and I, I, this is the first time i've even talked about it but it's just an example see these guys will say stuff like that because they know i won't talk about it publicly because yeah. i really don't give a shit you know all these people that, that come out and say oh the ufc doesn't pay the fighters and they only pay this percentage of the fucking this that and everything else it's all this narrative that i don't play into i, I you know the guys who fight here know, know that the, that they've been taken care of and you know and and it's one of these systems where the guys who actually bring all the value are the ones who, who make all the money. What was your thought process when you see Purdy get hurt? I was like, oh boy. Yeah. Like, let's giddy up. <laughs> like, yeah. But the thing was, bro, like, here's the crazy part about it is when Purdy went down, I still had full confidence. Josh Johnson, a seasoned veteran, been in the league for about 50 years. You know, he he, he can go out there and protect, you know, protect the ball, get it where it needs to go. And we got the top defense in the league. At that point, I think it was 7-0. So I'm like, all right, we're good. And then Christian goes and does, like, the Superman, you know, like, goes and scores off of, like, some hero play. Yeah. And it's 7-7. Yeah. So I'm thinking, okay, we're in it. Like, 7-7, seven, seven, we're good. Josh gets a concussion. He's out. And then we're on the sideline. I'm like, all right, who's next? Like, we don't have anybody else. Mm -hmm. I heard the story recently that Christian was getting his helmet uh, fitted for the QB thing, and I didn't know that was actually happening in, in real time. But then I see Purdy trotting back out. I'm like, well, what the heck? Why wasn't he in the whole time? But then you see the guy just giving handoffs every play. I'm like, we're toast. Boy. Some of my teammates play this game called hide and go get it with their friends. What does that mean? Hide and go get it is you hide. Like you're playing, think of hide and seek. Yeah. But the minute, the minute you find them, you get to dry hump them or do whatever for like five minutes. When I go through life, I'm looking for leaders because I think that leadership, everything rises and falls on leadership. And quite frankly, I think leaders are hard to find. And this guy's a leader. He's a leader of leaders because he can build relationships with people. He can connect with anybody in our locker room, anybody in our locker room from West Coast, East Coast, inner city suburbs, you know, farm boy. He can connect with anybody at any time, at any level. He's engaging, he's funny, but he's smart. He studies, he's tough. I keep a list in my phone of people I would hire if I ever started a company. And like right there is the guy I would hire to like run the company for me. Oh, you're hey, gonna brother, that is all right time, now. man. I yeah. put my piece out there. He is why I'm sitting on this chair and he is why I think this podcast will go as far as it wants to go. And I plan on when I'm retiring from football, giving him a call and saying, what are we doing? So that's all Dude, time, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, it's, you're going to make me too hard. Can you walk everybody through, was it the first fully guaranteed? It was 100% my agent. I remember sitting at the Super Bowl after my rookie year, and yeah. Joe Flacco was about to be a free agent. He was also about to quarterback in the Super Bowl. And we sat there. I knew nothing about contracts, and my agent said, what the Ravens are going to be able to do is either sign him to a long-term deal, or they're going to have to franchise tag him twice. And so the entire negotiation will be based off of two franchise tags and what those two franchise tags are worth, and 
that's what they'll have to negotiate off of. And so I didn't know four years later, I'd be in a similar spot where I'd finish my season becoming to free agency. And my agent just said, this is Joe Flacco all over again. It's a, a two-year franchise tag. And he said, what I'd like to do is because I, I see those two years being basically guaranteed, I'd like to just do a three-year deal fully guaranteed. And he offered that to the team. And obviously they were not interested in that model. And he just said, okay, then we'll do the two franchise tags. And said, two years from now, we'll go to free agency and try to get that same deal, a three-year deal fully guaranteed. And so that's literally what happened. Can you speak back on like making the climb to become the guy and that whole process unfolding with RG3 being like the face of the franchise? Sure. First of all, the model was back up Robert. And if I play well in preseason games, I'm going to get an opportunity somewhere in a trade. Kyle Shanahan made that very clear from the day I was drafted. And Rex Grossman said to me, this offense playing well is in, is in your best interest because when a quarterback can be a part of a really good offense, I think it makes other teams want you more. You know, we had a great year, our rookie year. I really just watched as Griff won Rookie of the Year. And then um, I just assumed, again, not knowing how the pro football works, I just assumed we'd run it back, be able to do the same thing. And the next year we went 3-13. and 13. And then Coach Gruden came in and that next year we went 4-12. and 12. And then going into 15, understanding that maybe if you practice well enough, you might get a shot. And then that was when Jay made the decision going into 2015 season that, okay, we're going to go with Kirk. Remember the, the game against Bucks, we got down 24 to nothing and the bye was the next week. So if we don't win that game, you know, I've heard some people say on that staff, they thought they were all going to get fired if we didn't win that game. And I probably don't come back after the bye week as a starting quarterback. We come back and win that game 31-30. And then I yell, you like that? In the you like that and, game, bro. And we never really looked back. For me, I grew up in the state. You were from Phoenix. I grew up in the state. So like I knew if I go back to Holland, Michigan, there's going to be a lot of people there that are maize and blue and a lot of people that are green and white. And so it was very, very personal, very real to me. And Coach D'Antonio would always say that you win this game, you walk the streets, not the alleys of your hometown. And I would sit there, oh, that's I would anger, I would sit there and I would nod my head like, uh, that's absolutely right. Like I know 8th Street in downtown Holland and I know I'm going to be on 8th Street in downtown Holland the rest of my life. And I know that I'm trying to walk the streets of that town the rest yeah. of my life. And so when we won my senior year to have won four in a row, and I knew that in the years I played, we were 3-0, and that's when I said it at the press conference, like I'm going to walk the streets of my hometown the rest of my life. And I'm not saying this with any kind of hyperbole. I'm literally going to walk the streets of my town with a Michigan State symbol on, knowing that like when I was there, we took care of business. So we talked to Jeff and I go up to him and I'm like, hey, how long do you think it would take, take to like soundproof, like get this thing ready to like do an episode? And, and at the ASAP, time, like ASAP, 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 as fast as possible. Like we were like willing to pay more yeah. to get it done faster. Bro, when we, I hope, do we have a photo? He said ASAP, as fast as possible. <laughs> God damn. What was that Louis joke? He goes, the worst part of the beheading. Yes. <laughs> oh, he's talking about how dumb you look after you get beheaded. You like hold your head up and you're like, dee, dee, dee. <laughs> So that's why you got he's like, yeah, you gotta be bald. Yeah. So they can't hold you. Hold like they hair. can't hold your yeah, hair yeah, out. They yeah. Tell me, have you ever uh, thrown up on a child at a football game? Yeah. No, that guy did that at the, the Phillies game. That was wonderful. Did you ever you hear that story? No. Uh -oh. A guy and his kid were in front of these Phillies fans, and they were like, I guess, talking shit back and forth, and a guy made himself throw up on the guy's kid. Oh, my God. Yeah. A Philly fan did that. Yes. That's the Philly way. Freak That's the like the nastiest thing of all time, dude. Philly, Philly's got to be like the skeeziest fans. I mean, you guys are the most savage fan base. They're, they're terrible, dude. Bar none. I was, I was with uh, Michael Che, and we were talking about going to the Niners Eagles NFC Championship championship and he's a Niners fan he was like I'm going I was like dude Ooh. do not go that would be a bad move like, don't wear Niners gear if you go there's gonna be 10,000 like 20 year old white dudes just literally spitting on you and then they're gonna find out you're from SNL oh and then they're, gonna, it's over. they're gonna see you're black <laughs> you're gonna go nuts dude you're gonna have to fight yeah, they're gonna wait a second. This son of a bitch is black. <laughs> the, well, the O line for the Chiefs rolled in. That's like that's Shane's. I love it. I love seeing. Big, I love seeing big boys. Dude. Yeah, because yeah. he's going. Dude, he's showing him his drills. So, huh, yeah, yeah, I get some huh. passes. Oh yeah, you're getting it. Yeah. Fucking. Yeah. Did you? Uh, was Orlando Brown there? Yeah. God, is he not the biggest yeah, fucking of all time? Huge. Cool.
Guy. Is he? I'm gonna need <laughs> yeah. to see these boys. Yeah. I talk yeah. to them. Yeah. 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 Where'd you play? Where'd you play college? Dude? Yeah. Yeah. Like Oklahoma. I'm like, that's sick. What years, bro? <laughs> I'm like, that's all. That's fucking all. When we went to Notre Dame. Oh, the yeah. boys. Those are the boys. Those are the boys. Those are the young dude. boys, yes. dude. Yeah. We were doing like baseball fields. That was fully loaded. That was yeah. so sick. But we were in South Bend, and the O line came out. I was like, Oh, I know yes, you were just yes. walking up the whole time. Because awesome. I remember I when like, you were, we got Ohio State yeah. Week One, dude. Let's in, go. You were doing one in uh, Indianapolis, and we, we were trying to get Quentin Nelson to go. You're like, If we get Quentin dude, here, tell him I will. He's the tell number him I one. Suck him I need Quentin. Dude. You love him like that? Yeah, I'm a big fan. After the show, we'll get him on the phone. Right, he he fucking right. he is all time well i'm really just gonna is. be like hey he's, he's so dude. quiet remember dude. remember when that safety blitz against georgia and you picked him up and leveled him dude that was so sick remember you choke slammed that guy against lsu in the bowl game <laughs> we interrupt this episode to bring you game time the game time app is the exclusive ticketing partner with barstool sports and busting with the boys you should not have to worry when you're buying your tickets to your next big event we've done some big giveaways with busting with the boys this year specifically our black friday giveaway and anytime we do a giveaway, we you, we go through game time because obviously we are a sports podcast. People love going to sporting events, concerts, wherever wherever you can get tickets to an event, do it through the game time app. Browse through the great game time app and talk about uh, <laughs> last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, easy to find and buy tickets of every kind to the event in your area. Uh, take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the app, create an account, Use code BUSSIN, that's B-U-S-S-I-N, for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code BUSSIN for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last-minute tickets, lowest prices, guaranteed. And it happens within seconds, two taps, tops. Back to the episode. You know, this this expression, I said to my buddy, he's he's made all the money. He's my age. He's made all the money. Whatever you think is a lot of money. Like his, his property in London, in England, uh, we were out there hunting on his property. And I go, where, where does your property end? And he goes, <clears throat> and I went, what are you doing? He goes, as far as your eye can see that way. And as far as your eye can see that way, Holy shit. that's how much money he has. But he, we were talking and he said, I, uh, you know, something's kind of, I'm, I, I'm looking for something more I'm talking about ayahuasca and stuff. And I said, I think that's because you can hear God clearing his throat in the other room. <clears throat> you ever feel that? Like, you know, whatever that is, that, that thing, nah, I'm fucking up over here should be over here i'm lying a little bit it's okay you hear that <clears throat> i'm like oh fuck i know i i know you're there but i'm just gonna create some noise i'll get to you in a second he's just like okay i'll be here that's the truth listen there are guys i this group called seal team six that's not a question that's no 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 it's you're now group called Delta Force. ask us the question <laughs> i know i'm just story. i love story I know. time with uncle it's brian one thing to be able to kill a bunch of guys it's another thing to be in the heat of battle knowing who to take a shot on and who not to you see this? You see, watch this. Huh? Oh, oh. Bang. See that? You see that? See what I just fucking did? Yeah. You see that? That's. Hey. Hit it. Oh, hit it. Uh, bang, bang. You know. Hit it. Bang. See that? So you I just killed five times. Yeah. yeah. This guy just can't yeah. pull a triple shot. Yeah. Yeah. Good guy. Fucking bad guy. Bang. You know, see, you're, yeah, that's what it is. What about animals? Remember, it was a riff. What was it called on the board? Dee dum 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 da dee dee. That was the name. That was the name. Phonetic riff. Dee dum 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 da dee dee. You coming up with that song like a dad walking into the car, you guys getting caught. We were going to film the video for Photograph, and then we were going on tour. Last day in the studio. Wow. That was, it was amazing watching this fucking guy work. <laughs> I was there, so we went downstairs. He started. Dum, 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 dum. So we just started to play. He ran through it maybe two or three times. Yeah. Okay, that's a chorus, whatever. And I went to the mic and I went. I'm like, I got it. Okay, I'm going to go from this. Yeah, you sat in your car. He took the recording yeah, of that. I'm fired up. Right now. Hey, Will. Hey, yeah, I'm doing yeah, movement, huh? Yeah, I'm like, you know, my mouth's getting up, but I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. He took that recording. He's, Are you humming those things? Yeah, so of us, of us jamming, he went out to his car and you played it in there and he came back with all those lyrics. Like, got it. Let's track it. That's probably, I probably sat there for so 45 fast. minutes. Is there any song that's made it that you were surprised that made it of like your hits? Oh, that was a good. Great, great question. question. Actually, mine was Rockstar. I didn't, I was like, I couldn't believe it. 
Really? Yeah. I knew it was a good song. I didn't think it was going to be a hit. And still, when we played in arenas, the whole place oh. just lights up. Oh, like, yeah. I still can't believe this song. I mean, before before we got on the bus, I was telling him, I was uh, joking on Dale, because Dale Jr. makes an appearance. And he goes, man, I thought I was big in NASCAR. When that song went global, he's like, it actually skyrocketed my brand even more. When that album was out, we hit a uh, concert. I think I was a sophomore or junior in high school. It was in St. Louis. Went out there. It was the fuck. It was, it was the best, bro. Went back, you know, best friend that I was dating at the time. We get back home. We go to this gravel road nearby, hold hands to animals for a good little bit before I take her home. But it was a fucking... That's cool. Just hold hands? Night. Yeah, we just held hands. Yeah, of course. You know, it was dark. It was late. You're a gentleman. Like, let's throw on some animals and let's <laughs> right. hold hands for a little bit. There was though. one time. Me and my boys were clowning a lot around in the bedroom. We were playing fucking Grand Theft Auto, but it's late at night. My dad comes in, hey, keep it down. He leaves the room, but we have the giggles. Like, it's at oh. the time of night, we have the giggles the best yeah and you know you couldn't hear like you could hear everything in the house it doesn't matter what room you're in and we're still having a good time he's like hey i thought i told you to fucking keep it down i'm like all right dad like you know we're just all right but i have a little smirk on my face because we have the giggles and i'm a junior in high school <laughs> yeah yeah i'm a junior in high school third time he comes in he's like i thought i told you to and keep it down. He's like, I was like, oh, guys, hey, we got to keep it down. Well, he walks in the room. He walks in the room and he, stand, he, stands, he stands in front of me like this. He's like, I told you to and keep it down. And my boy is up against the wall behind my dad, just like sitting there. Tears coming down his face from laughing. And he's trying to hold it his laughter because he realized how serious the moment is. And my dad's like, hey, come outside with me. And as I'm like getting up, you know how you're kind of like, you're kind of like trying to stay a little front on him because you don't, you don't want to like turn your back to him. He fucking like shoves me toward the door and we get like out in the room. And the dude like stands over me and I got like this fucking stance. I got like this stance like this and I'm leaning back and he's like in my face. And he's like, you ever feel like you want a shot at the title? Just let me know. <laughs> You, did you ever do uh, traditions at your school, like take a drink or anything like that? Like we had a thing called the drink and your your first 12 travels, you had to, the seniors would make a concoction. They could put whatever they wanted in it, which is scary. And you would have to take a, a teaspoon of it and eat, and eat it. I was starting as a freshman and I had to eat it every day before the game. And it was like Tabasco, salt, pepper, horseradish. No. Clumped up. You all never had nothing like that? No, like each freshman would have to like basically all the O linemen, the senior and junior and senior O linemen would shower together and each freshman would have to go in and basically shower with them. Dude, what? Bro, I didn't go get it and now this, dude. <laughs> Yo, what is wrong with your lifestyle? <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> I made that up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I was fucking worried, dude. <laughs> Oh my god. As you were going, I was like, I don't really have anything, but let me just make some weird shit that up that funny. can live on TikTok. I don't know. Will and I were uh headed to the Drake party and at Scottsdale Airport. George gets out of the car. We see the boy George. Just was on the phone a minute ago. A 100%. minute ago. Will and I puts you there's George. There's, there's, he is. there's the boy. He goes, Go. So I start doing the Scooch through. I know you, you try, like, it was a numbers game there, but, but, us being on the phone, a minute ago, and you walk in, like, there's the boy George. George is, like, getting escorted, and we're like, hey, I'm like, hey, just get right here. Right. We're going in, and then this is where so you George, feel your thing. George is holding the gate, or with the security guard, holding yep. the gate, looking yep. down. He's going, this person, this person, and then he peeks with it, he gets a peripheral on me, and he goes, oh, we all and make then eye he contact. points to the person right in front of me, he goes, this is the last person right here. Bro. And that person walked through. It's 100%. Now listen, no, it's 100% what listen. happened. It's 100% what happened. As, that happened. As the gate 100% what happened. Dude, I'm looking at George, and I just go, Taylor and I stand go, at the I gate. Go, I go, Georgie. He goes, <laughs> and the gate's closing, and he just goes, I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> and we walked away. I think I said, George, it, it's me. Do you think you guys beat the Chiefs? I, like I said, I never have any doubt in my head going into a football game. So, yes, 100%, I think we would have beaten the Chiefs. Dude, you brought up a good point about those uh, those proud boys that are like, this country music, this pop country music's bullshit. Like, why do you think that's happened? Because I thought that Thomas read about it, and he's like, yeah, but when the Outlaws came out back in the day, like Willie and Waylon and all them, they were saying back then, that's not country music. And now we all look back at that like, man, what an era for country music. Yeah, uh, I think there's some stuff now that's a little more of a stretch. I mean, comparing Waylon Jennings to Johnny Cash saying they're night and day back then is not quite like some of the hip-hop type stuff we have yeah. going out. But music does change all the time and there's a lot of different musically ways you can go in this genre but I, I always say that the storytelling is what makes country music song that has a story has some kind of meaning that's the kind of thing about country obviously you can go like techno bar and just it's like people just want to dance and people like to have a good time there's songs like that too but I always say if it's got some kind of meaning to it and story it can be somewhat considered country music every show I opened for Luke Bryan there were a handful of guys there. You know the guys I'm talking about. They're like, man, this ain't country music. You know, it's uh, those guys. This their girlfriend drug them to the show, but they came to see me. You know, and uh, 
Love that. I'm going to tell you this. is I watch it happen every night because this dude puts on a show. They're seven beers deep, and he's up there, and he's doing the thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah the and they're the like, I got that real good. And the yeah. guys are just like, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. love it. Because he's like, he, he does it, man. He does the thing. There's, I, I look at, there's like three types of like shower people. The guy who comes in with the towel and puts it over the shower head, mm -hmm. showers, immediately takes it off. You got no way of seeing. Two is you have the guy that doesn't even go in with the towel. That's me. I go in and come out. I own what I got. Nothing like it. There's no Godzilla hanging out. And then the number three is the dude that just takes a towel and puts it kind of over his belly button. Yeah. Are you are you guys belly button? Depends towel. on how fat I am. If it's December, yeah, if it's I'm winter, I absolutely. It. I'll tell you what. There's a couple other guys you're missing. You even D brought it up with Aaron, the guy that showers in the corner and doesn't let you see anything the whole time. If he's rubbing his shoulder, he's got one over his parts. Those are the guys I trust the least in the locker room. <laughs> if you're not gonna let me look at that thing, or not look at it eye to eye, but catch a periff on it, yeah, you've either got something fucked up with you, or you're holding something in here. The other guy, and this is a very rare breed of individual. The individual. That that comes in with a towel long ways tucked in the armpits and drapes over the front. And I the don't back think I've going. ever seen that. Kendall Lamb. He, he was, does what? He takes the towel, tucks it here, tucks it here, and it drapes long ways. But cheeks are out in the back. He must have them titties. I'd always give a little, little movement pull it on a little bit before I walked in there. <laughs> uh, you, you, you do your best. The first couple weeks of OTAs and hey, you guys nor, are coming Normalize in. that. Yeah. Because the, everyone does it, but no bit. one wants to talk about yeah. it. I appreciate you bringing pull that up. on that thing a little that, bit because you funny. don't want. It's hard because you're in spandex. And so That's it pushes it, it in. I know. Well, you, you want to do a little, an extra trick. This is, this is game now. So listen up. <laughs> Fucking as you're pulling on your little piece, push up on the balls. But I also faced the boys like in Washington. My nickname was shrimp. Man, oh, there goes shrimp. There go. Actually, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was Dunbar, Dunny. And he would be like, there goes Scrimp. Why do they call you Shrimp? Come on. We call it meat gazing. We're pro, yeah. we're pro so, meat gazers here. But here's the thing, though. Meat gazers, meat they're, peaking, they're, however they're, Like you said, the peripheral, I respect that. That's natural. Totally cool with that. Then there's the meat gazers, like when I'm literally talking to you and I've met guys that are asking me like about the end of the day and then they keep talking, they go right back up. I'm like, so mm. that was not tasteful. That was actually very violated. I yeah. feel violating and now I feel violated. Yeah. Therefore, like, I want to end this conversation quickly, especially because yeah. I told you, I'm I'm not a towel guy. I go in, I shower, I come out. If you're going to check it from the perif, that, that, that's your choice. Right, don't let me that. catch you looking but at like, it. But like when we're having a big conversation, I see you just drop down, keep going, and then come back up and be like, so yeah, what'd you think on that one-on-one -on -one right there? Was that, was yeah, that cool yeah. of you to do? I'm like, easy. I'm, I'm not going to drop names because I, I feel bad. Yeah. Uh, Vince Beagle, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you guys are probably asking yourself, why am I dressed like a fucking badass, dude? And the answer the boss is going to have up on the screen my old man back in the 80s, he was rocking this exact fit that one day uh, Taylor was talking about getting snakeskin boots. But my old man, the tier one that he is, he shot me a text that night after he watched the episode and shot me this photo saying, hey, your old man used to rock some snakeskin boots back in the day, some pythons. And I saw this photo because that was also the time where I told the story about him challenging me to the title. Like, hey, you ever feel like you want a shot at the title? You just fucking let me know when. That was that episode. So I see this, I'm like, holy fuck. I sent it to the group chat. Jack immediately, yeah, your dad's definitely beating your ass. From that moment, I was like, yo, I got to recreate this fit somehow. I got, I jumped on the web, typed in Gold's Gym Crew. There, obviously, there's a plethora of them out there. Found me some uh, some Python snakeskin boots on Amazon. These are some uh, jeans I've just had in a white collar as well, but had to recreate the look because it's fucking badass, dude. Who would win in a fight, a bear or a gorilla? Argument as old as time. Just say what you would think and then we can open it up. Gorilla. Bear. Gorilla. Bear. Gorilla. Bear. 50-50 split right now. No, I think where right. it's hard, you don't see that aggr any of those like aggressive videos like you do in abundance with the bears out there. Like bears can stand and go fucking toes and it looks violent. However, I think you piss that silver back off, dude. Like they're so fucking strong. I think they can lift like 10 ton over their head. You're a gorilla, you're maneuver around and all you need is get on that back. You grab them, throw a fucking right hook and bite in their fucking spine. It's over. You've seen a gorilla fucking charge and just swing that motherfucker, dude. If they're both running at each other, I envision a fucking and gorilla taking that arm, whop, landing one to the head. But let's just say the grizzly bear stands up, taking a shot to the gut, boom, shot to the gut, and one of them rolls that them gorillas do, bear drops down, gorilla jumps on his fucking back, another one, bam, to the skull, and then bites his fucking spine, 300 pounds per square inch, it's over. Leave in the comments, gorilla or gorilla or bear. This comes from at jhavi34, are you gay? Fan question, they're asking you if you're gay. Oh, if I'm gay. Yeah. No, I'm not gay. Uh, there's a saying that I had that that's how you find out. Sometimes you got to suck a dick to know you don't like sucking dick. And we know, and I found out, and I found out. So no, I would say I'm not gay.
can almost beat the shit out of me. Dude, the idea that he... That's no, so no, funny. I could defeat him because he has Gollum's body. Dude, look at his body. Not a single muscle. He's a doctor's fucking sad. And we're watching a little you, two fight, film. you two fight would be so funny. What happened? What happened? Give some context. Because that's all I said. I go, is this a real story? And he said, yes, just ask him. You're going to think it's so stupid. So this is back when there was MySpace. And I was always in his top 10 friends. Yeah. I was like number three. And then he started booking movies and stuff, right? So then all of a sudden you see Judd Apatow, Will Ferrell in his top. And I got weeded down to like 23 or something. So one day we're at Cobb, San Francisco, and I go, what's up, Hollywood? You know what I mean? I'm no longer a top 10. He goes, hey, buddy. You know what I mean? F you, you know what I mean? And I go, f you. And then that's how it started. Over MySpace. MySpace top 10. That's some like high school. I got real, dude. Hallway type stuff. You like you check your boy if you're not in the top five anymore. Choking me. You know what I mean? It was crazy. Oh, he started choking you. Yeah, and then Steve goes, hi -ya! You know, with the arms. You know what I mean? It was an all Asian tour. <laughs> it was an all Asian yeah. tour, and then um, and then me and um, mm -hmm. Ken didn't talk to each other for like eight years. After and now that. you guys are great. We're fine. We're great now. We're all I love good. Them now. It's all love. Hey, can you do an Asian accent? I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. Just try. You can cut it out. Let's just try. What do you want me to say? Just go. Hello. How are you? He literally goes. Oh well. He got all. <laughs> Who did that? Like a parent that's very concerned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can cut it out. Let's try. Cut it out. Hello. <laughs> Perfect. It's perfect. You gotta leave that in. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 yeah. that's like my, uh, that's like the Team America. Oh, oh, hello. That, yeah, that yeah, yeah, very exactly good, very good. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys have some strict, like, yeah. you guys gotta accomplish a yeah. lot. But even the grades in the report card, it means something different to Asian parents. Well, like what? Like the A means average. Well, B means beatings. C. Coma. D. Death. F. Get the whole family dies. <laughs> <laughs> so I raced my first race when I was three. Everything for me happened super early. Like most, yeah. most riders start four, five, six, right around there. So I started traveling all throughout Europe at an early age as well. I started riding German championship and then European championship, you know, at a really early age. So I was kind of used to going different countries because I guess it'd be like going from California to Nevada. I was going from Germany to France and it's a total different culture. So I was used to that. Having said that, coming over for the first time ever was 2005, actually. My parents and Suzuki back then surprised me, actually. We showed up at this property and uh, I'm getting dressed and everything and I'm starting riding, there's super cost tracks, outdoor tracks, like multiple tracks on a property. And so that was, you know, first time in the US, it was all new to me. Like the big tracks, big compounds and everything wasn't normal. So I'm riding and riding and I come back and uh, I see somebody with a number four ripping on a super cost track and it was Ricky. No oh my shit. God. I did had no idea. My parents surprised me. And uh, that was my first encounter with Ricky. And then sure enough, oh, 10 years later, I started racing for his team. I will say this morning was day one of pushing a little earlier for the workout. Our alarm goes off 530, snoozed once, got out of bed, didn't wake the wife, snuck out of the room, uh, went, got it in for an hour, back on time, got to get coffee with the fam. I was at a coffee shop doing some work before I came here. And I think it's a new, the new me. The only downfall is I ran out of gas. Yeah. I didn't start the gas. I we'll called call, Taylor. Who called me today? Yeah, I called Taylor like 7 30 because I ran out of gas before and Taylor was the one who helped me out. You ain't got a gas can, so I figured the boy would get an ice of a laugh. What did, what's me? the first thing I said to you when you told me I ran out of gas? I can't remember. Do you want me to come get you? Oh, yeah. You, he was like, Taylor was like, Taylor like answered. He was like in a deep sleep. He's like, hello. He's like, is everything all right? I was like, yeah, I ran out of gas. He's like, where, where are you? I was like, hey, it's all, it's all good. I got it all covered. I just yeah, the boy, you, hey, you, you see get a it, nice though. laugh. I figured That's you get a nice laugh. the kind of friend you're looking for in life. Yeah. Just give myself my own flowers. I'm a great <laughs> friend, dude. Yeah. Can you please, without being as biased as possible, give us a reasonable record you think they'll have? I don't know if it's time for that. All right. Minnesota, we're starting the season off with a dub. Nebraska, 1-0. Colorado, I've been out there saying it, 2-0. Going into Northern Illinois, I think we dust the fuck out of them pups. Louisiana Tech, there's no reason we can't be 4-0 going into the Bustin' Bowl. Michigan, Nebraska, okay. This is where I will go ahead and say we're winning last drive of that football game. We're going 5-0. We're going 5-0. Illinois, we lose. No Northwestern. We whooped them nerds' ass. We are going, what is that, six and one. Purdue, I do think we sneak this game. Oh, it's fucking Purdue, dude. We can't beat the Polar Makers. Seven and one. Nebraska, Michigan State. At Michigan State, I can see us having again. I think we're drinking our Kool-Aid a little bit too much. That's why I think we lose one. Seven and two. Uh, Nebraska, Maryland. Look, there is no world where Maryland ever beats us. Nebraska, Wisconsin. I think we lose to Wisconsin. Let's go ahead and say, what is that? What's that record? Eight and three. Iowa. I think we beat Iowa. Rivalry week to go to the Big Ten Championship. We beat Iowa nine and three going into the Big Ten Championship. That's what I think happens in the regular season. I've yeah. seen a couple of those little skits. They're, they're <laughs> solid, dude. They're solid. The That's football... Like the football coach no, one? Classic, dude. It's a classic. That's a I mean, I mean, I don't know what you want me to tell that. Everybody's like, football's a team game, okay? It's not a team game, okay? I did my part, all right? I put in a great game plan. I mean, these players, they're horrible. For the football one, I bet that has made me $3 million. Really? $3 million. Yeah.
that that bit. Throwing out that number like that too. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know how to say it like hey, that, but I'm trying crazy. to put an, an estimate on. Yeah, just as far as like getting that kind of attraction. That was unnecessary to say. That no, no, no. It wasn't unnecessary. Yeah, but I'm trying to the magnitude of. I mean, a kid came up to me yesterday in the airport. He's mm. like, dude. Are you that football coach? If they say that, I just go, yeah, you know, yeah. not in the game it's, anymore. But, not in oh, the yeah, game yeah. anymore. Yeah. You know, they let me go for that. They let me go for that. Yeah. Or if you're Amish at 18, you go on what's called Rumspringer. Mm -hmm. You know what that is? I think Rumspringer, yes, I do. And let me, let yeah. me try to explain it because I have to salvage whatever I've done on the show. Uh, it's when you like go and like do regular people stuff for a while mm -hmm. and then you come back, right? They go do it like heathen sinful. Make the, don't say regular people. Make them sound like the worst. Yeah. And make the Amish people sound good. Okay, so yeah. they go and do demonic shit. <laughs> and then they come back. <laughs> okay, yeah. got it, dude. A yeah. couple of satanic so rituals. They, yeah, they yeah, rip yeah, back. Yeah, yeah, that yeah, wasn't yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. more that like more it. like get an iPhone and like get on Tinder. You're like, how does this Amish guy have a cell phone and like is, is driving like a like a Chevy Tahoe? You're mm -hmm. like, well, he he hasn't made his decision yet to join because once you join the church, then you're in control of the bishop. The bishop right. can say you can do this or can't do this. Do they have like get it at an allowance? Are you saving up shekels? What are we doing? That is is that too much? How can I not say stuff and he's allowed to say that? But no, I, they're not going to say it. We want it, dude. What are you talking about? Shekels? No, do they? They don't save up shekels. They like like corn yeah. and vegetables and stuff. And dude. then they go and sell it. Will is finding a way to not be canceled. How? Like, he did an April Fool's joke, and he it was a black baby, and it, and it was hilarious. And you look at it and you're like, God, I hope he, I hope I have a co-host after this. And yeah, it's like yeah, nothing yeah. happened. You're like, dude, I have Jesus yeah. on his insurance. And everyone's like, yeah. this fucking guy's yeah. the problem. You're like, I go to church. Yeah, yeah. I went. <laughs> That's a video he posted. What was the name he put on it? Erlene. I can't believe yeah. it's perfect. Willa Erlene Compton. We post that. People are in the in the mentions being like, congratulations. Oh, shit. I was like, oh my no, God. He didn't get canceled. He didn't get canceled. They somehow let him go. He just laid down. That was a good, those are good stats. There's not, there's not. We, NFL players, the boys can play some ball now. <laughs> Call me. Oh, shit. Yes. <laughs> We're here. He wants it. He needs it. Dude, you sound you sound terrible. And you've already gotten me sick once this month. And I just feel like, am I gonna get this? I've never heard no, of No, no, I'm not, I'm not contagious. I'm not contagious anymore. No, that's what they all say, dude. Oh, dude. <sighs> NFL players, the boys can play some ball now. You're not gonna beat basketball players at their own game. However, there's not an NBA player that can backpedal and cover one wide receiver in the league. True. I think cornerback is the hardest position of any sport across all leagues. Besides left tackle, yeah, I would. I, that's close. It's absolutely close. If you had to get rid of one series, which would you get rid of, Harry Potter or Star Wars? But we need to all answer Everybody right now. Answer. Go ahead, JP. I go first. See ya, Harry Potter. Expelliarmus, as they say. I will agree. I'm going to stick with Star Wars. I just feel like there's endless possibilities in that world. I agree with you guys, man. The universe of Star Wars? You can do way more stuff, and there's way more better storylines. I'm keeping... Harry Potter. I'm picking Star Wars. I grew up with Star Wars, but for all the same reasons too, you said like, you know, the philosophy behind it, the storylines, it doesn't the characters, it doesn't get any better than that. For Harry Potter, the first one for me came out when I was in first grade and then we grow for almost a decade and a half and you see this character development and they grow with you. To me, that's special. I have, I have to stand with Harry Potter. Lord Voldemort or Darth Vader? I mean, that's tough too. They're just like both the antithesis of evil. I think for that argument, I I would kind of have to go Voldemort because there are so many Darth Maul, Darth everybody. Yeah, but the 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 elite of the elite. It's like, like a crime to say Voldemort's name in the Harry Potter world. Everyone says Darth Vader, but if you even say Voldemort, people <gasps> We did not speak his name. Who's yeah, winning with, in that battle if you took the Harry Potter world versus the Star Wars world? It's tough to beat magic, but the Force. Yeah, and you got fucking laser guns. I, yeah, bro. I think, I mean, who, who's taking Yoda? Who's beating Yoda? Dobby. Like, yo, Luke Skywalker is body bagging. Harry? Yeah. Ah, bro. Oh, bro. Harry's the chosen one. Yeah, but he gets so he gets lucky in out. all of his movies. Oh, well, that's part of his gift. He was a baby and beat the greatest wizard of all time. My pet peeve of the week, old people drivers. Senior citizens on the road. I strongly believe that once you get over a certain age, let's just say 50, 55. Okay, I'll move to 55. Once you turn 55, you should have to take the driver's test every year. And Amen. Get that thing. I'm so sick of these old people out here. Like, okay, let me start that over. When you turn 
65 and become a legal senior citizen and reap the benefits of what social security you get an extra hot dog in line or some shit get to go to them halls that they all go to and drink a beer you should have to retest annually for your driver's license because these old people out on the road are a liability and i see this figure as tall a little bit shorter than me but like his head sticking out like my head sticking out and i look over vince vaughn, vince White fucking White. vaughn is at this part and i think to myself do i can even say anything to this man. I looked over, there's like 15 people talking to Vince. It's not like 15 people are talking with Vince. People are all sitting there waiting for their opportunity to talk to Vince. So I think to myself, there's no way I'm getting into that mix. If an opportunity comes up, it comes up. I'm at the party at like 10.30. It's like 12, 15. I'm like, I need to go home. I'm going to get in a flight in the morning. The people are like, hey, cars are going to take about 15 minutes. And it's fuming in the back of my head. Man, fuck this. So I walk back. He ends up being with like three other people, three other guys. One guy's a guy that I met. He and I were talking during the little drone show. So I walk up and that's kind of like my way in. I put my hand on the guy's shoulder. I was like, hey, brother, blah, blah, blah. Uh, like kind of picked up where we left off in the last conversation. I look up, I see Vince Vaughn. I go, hey man, don't let you know. My name's Taylor. I'm a big fan of you. Been watching you my whole life. I love what you do. Looks me right in the eyes and he goes, hey man, it's re really nice to meet you. As soon as our hands leave each other, his two boys in the left and right of him turn their backs to me, put their shoulders together and escort him away from me. It was the weirdest, most uncomfortable experience no. ever. My shout out, no free shout out goes to Bubble Wrap. When I was a young buck growing up and you get some Bubble Wrap in the, in the boxes and you just got to pop them and jump on them and snap them and make noises. Uh, it always fired me up. Hell yeah. And still to this day, I'll like grab and squeeze and hear that pop and it kind of just brings me back to my childhood a Gets little bit. Like so my shout out, no free shout out goes to bubble wrap. Do you prefer the big bubble wrap or the small bubble wrap? That's a great question. No, like the little ones, you get a bunch of like, you get all the firecracker sounds going off. So that always fired me up, but the big ones are more fun. You get to be more intentional with the pop. The small ones, you're like, hey, man, all right, I'm going to try and do this as fast as you can. You ever get out one, you ever get out, out one of them cookie rollers and fucking roll over it? You're like, all right, hey, nobody touch this little bubble wrap. This is mine today. <laughs> get it out, put it on the table and be like. <laughs> <laughs> but I did come across one thing, and I, it's, a, it's a different podcast. They have like 200 followers. But they tagged, tagged me and I don't know if they tagged Will in it. But it's a video of them talking about busting with the boys. And one guy apparently went to school with Will. And the guy's like, yeah, you know, Will, just a goofy guy, has fun. Like, and it's really cool to see him on this podcast. Like, I'm thinking, oh, I got tagged and I might get a couple words said about the boys. So I'm sitting there essentially fishing for my own compliment and watching this entire video. They go back and forth about Will, the majority of the video. It takes a hard left turn when it comes to me. So I know I know Compton very well. That's just how, that's just who he is. He's just a goofy dude that works his works his balls off like how Juan is <clears throat> on the podcast is exactly person to just like he'll talk over you he's just yeah. kind of <laughs> rude and kind just kind of I mean he's kind of just an asshole yeah. that's, just who he is. <laughs> that's it and yeah. it's just like yo the flowers will guy they're like he's just kind of an asshole talks over people and I thought to myself I do can talk over people a bunch but it makes you reflect dude I'm like holy shit I guess I'm fucking I guess I'm just that dude that just an asshole I wouldn't consider it breaking news but to me, it's heartbreaking news. Uh -oh. Rich Eisen coming soon on Pardon My Take. No fucking way. That's fucking crazy. Now, I will. Let me gather myself. Rich Eisen's going on PMT? Yeah. What are we doing, cuz? I don't know. What are we doing, boys? <sighs> My ass. Fuck me in the ass. Everything in life, you get fucking banged once or twice. You can take shit on the chin and keep moving forward. It's not how hard you get hit. It's how much you can keep moving forward. Rich Eisen is a gentleman and a scholar. What he lacks in hairline, he makes up for in character. He is an incredible, incredible man. I love Rich Eisen. Rich Eisen has told the boys, I will come on your podcast. Even though there is not an engine on this bus, he is going to come sit down with me and Willie C. And we're going to talk and then Jackson have a judgment day of if he really earned a, a Silverado or not. I have texted him. We have talked on the phone. Here's the issue. Scheduling. When this podcast happens, when this love child is finally birthed, it is going to be incredible. What day are we on? 343. We are really close to a year. We're staring down a year right now. 343. We might need to do it on the anniversary. That leads into why I drink dip spit. I got out of school one day, took a little, a little victory lap around the neighborhood with a few friends after school. So I had victory on my breath for sure. I was dipping Grizzly Natural. I'm in my truck. It's a rainy day. I'm going down Caldwell next to the Lipscomb football field. I have a, I have like a half full bottle of dip spit in my cup holder in my truck. Me and, me and this guy both roll through a stop sign and a cop is right here. Cop turns his lights on. I'm like, shit. Like, I know my breath. If he pulls me over right now, I know my breath. So I like go down, I get down the hill and I pull over and I just take a glug, glug, glug of this grizzly natural, the saltiest. Important to note, on the back of my truck, I had a, I'm on a boat sticker. I had a Beatles sticker and I had a Bob Marley sticker. 
<laughs> yeah, right, okay. Just look so, at the camera. Yeah, so I roll the window. Man, I was like, that other guy ran it too. He was like, I know, I was going to, he was like, whoever pulled over, I was stopping. I was like, he kept going. I was like, okay, well, <laughs> shit. Should have kept going. He goes, uh, let me see your license. And at this point, he doesn't smell anything on me. But he goes, uh, let me tell you what, I know a few things about you. He goes, I graduated high school the, the year you were born. Ernest is a interesting name and you smoke weed i go why do you say that he was like the bumper stickers day giveaway get home safe it's raining and i'm like dude i was so messed up about it for the rest of the day and i'll never forget that story and every time i go through there i stop all the way now we were at the staples center and wiz khalifa and michael phelps were in my green room smoking kk dog like i was in rotation with michael phelps and wiz khalifa and my wife delaney dream rotation i just couldn't believe it so then morgan's going on so we all take the elevator we go up we got this sweet i'm up there hooked with michael phelps wiz khalifa some other people were watching wiz pulls one he's like some kk rolled by wiz and i was like yeah dude like that. yes and then i look up and it's like oh shit i got 12 minutes before i gotta be down there and we're doing flower shop so i elevator rush boom boom throwing a new fit i'm lit walk out on stage so in my mind wiz is watching me right now in this massive thing right i'm doing flower shops and after flower shops every night we throw roses morgan's got a bouquet i got a bouquet we go out and milk it so i get my roses and i go out there and i see this group of fellas and one of them was a tall black dude but i wasn't like oh that's wiz because wiz is up here in my mind right so i just see i see the fellas it's dark i can't really see much i was like oh i'm throwing roses to the fellas didn't think nothing of it i get back to my green room seth my manager runs in here he's dude wiz caught your fucking roses i was like no way wiz is up there he goes no wiz came down to watch from the pit i was like what? And there's this picture. Out. Wiz is the happiest year. Wiz has his sunglasses on. He's holding up a bouquet of roses and just teasing so hard. Bro, that is so fucking dope. Wiz caught my roses. So the other thing is, I mean, I do have a couple plans, though, because if, if he's a douchebag, like, I think maybe I'll just line our entire driveway with bikers and make him drive past every one of them. Bad like, boys type stuff. Yeah, and then just, just some good meet him in the driveway. Just meet him out there and be like, what no, kind of bikers? the good ones. <laughs> the good ones? The most scary ones? Yeah. 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 They're all nice men. They're great people. For the most part. Line the whole driveway with bikers, right? Yeah. Have him drive past every one of them. And then we'll circle him in the driveway and we'll just walk out and meet him and be like, look, man, I ain't going to clean a gun in front of you. You know I got him. Just know that anything you do to hurt, every one of us is going to do to you. And there's some of these boys that's been upstate that they got some practice. <laughs> hey, the best part about that, uh, you don't have to deliver that message. You have uh, you have one of your boys deliver that message, and you get to come out. Hey, how you doing? Eric, how you doing, man? Well, that's you, even you, better. Yeah, yeah, yeah I be, like you that. You get to be like the good energy, and he's just thinking, oh, my God, these dudes right here. Yeah, hey, man, make sure scare you scare him too bad, didn't you? Y'all, yeah. they didn't scare yeah. you too bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're yeah. nice guys. Good, yeah. yeah, and they're good guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. 38, white powdered beaches. Different shades of blue in the ocean. Mm. Not over, not overwhelmingly crowded. But dude, it's a vibe, man. I'm talking townhouses. They got these brick roads, so it's narrow. It reminds me a lot of Italy. I've never been to Italy, but yeah, around but the pictures you've seen, the yeah, screensavers. I've, yeah. I've seen it reminds me a lot of yeah, Italy. Yes. Do not trust a man that doesn't have at least one vice. If you don't have a vice and you haven't been to prison, the military, or rehab, I just don't trust you. Fair enough. Well, we all got vices here. Yeah, so I, I'm not going to disagree with you. Jerking off is mine. Oh, 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 oh. I can't stop thinking about this well done steak. Let me think of how I'd handle it. I would wait for the uh, waiter or waitress to come over and probably be like, how are you enjoying your meal? And I think that's when I take my opportunity to be like, I'm absolutely terrified to tell you that it's a little overcooked. I'm going to eat this, but I don't want to make your job any harder by sending this thing back. No, I'm, dude. I'm, 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 I'm petrified, but I, like it tastes good. It tastes solid. And then, however, she, and then, no, no, there'd be no, however, I would let them say, oh, no, it's not a hassle. Like, I'll, we'll easily take, I bet, no, 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 please, no. And then, as they're like trying to take the plate up, like, look, if, if you insist, and you're like, listen, <laughs> no. A listen, shot. listen, listen, no, no. listen, shot. this is no problem at all. We will, we'll do another one. And then I bet the manager will probably come out and be like, hey, we'll comp this for you. I have one yes or no question for you guys that everybody needs to go around and answer. I was polling people all weekend. Do you pee in the pool? Yes. Yes. No. Don't lie, Mitch. I swear to God, I've never peed in the pool. Shut the f up, Never? Mitch. Don't say you. never. Just don't say that. Say 99% of the time. I have not peed in the pool. I bet you did when you were young. Okay. Maybe oh, when I was a well, baby. you can't say never. Okay, I... Do not consciously piss in the pool. Okay. Jack, if we're ever in the pool together and you guys see me swim away. If, if you have the opportunity to like piss in like a bush or something, you should. But sometimes it happens. 
but sometimes it happens. I think the answer is just yes. Yeah, I pee in the pool almost every time I go to the pool. Dude, you know what's a bit of a rush? You feel like you're being sneaky? Being Taking a dump in a lake. Aqua dump. Yeah, dropping an aqua dump out there. Say you're, you, whether you're a party cove or you're just out. You're I've just out never done that, but I also haven't been around a whole lot of lakes in my life. I mean, I'm just saying, I've pinched a few off out there in the lakes before. <laughs> really? yeah, yeah. What's funny is you just feel like you're, uh, your swim trunk's just down around your knees, but I'll just hey, say that you it's an aqua dump. So it's, it's fun. It's a fun experience. The baby girl profile dm'd and asked if they come on busting with the boys and we were saying how we weren't gonna do it yeah. and so I, I was like i appreciate you we're gonna have to pass and then when he dm'd on that friday night was a friday night and said like hey we've been trending for a couple days i think we can make a good show and i had read that article that he did with i think tmz the new york post or the athletic and just saw it it's just like yo this dude is a is delusional. He's delusional. one of those delusional fathers living through his kid. What really pissed me off is when he tries to play this, I'm doing this all for him. I'm doing this all for him. I understand there is a, there like there's a, there's that part of me that sees parents and they, they, their kids, they might have profiles. And I know, I understand the, the, the layout now, the game of social media and everything else. Kids can have profiles and brands and everything else, and they can capitalize monetarily off of them. But the way he's doing it through his own son, because he's essentially doing it like all himself, the whole this has been premeditated since before he was born. His mind's been programmed since he was six. He's saying all this bullshit. That was what festered me up about it. When he came back around to get on, want to get on the bus, it's like, yo, I haven't seen anybody like step out. Right. And I was like, yo. And then you see all these profiles collabing with them and saying, baby Gronk, going around to 10 different schools, he's got offers. So he's, more, dad, he's got more offers than high school kids. Yeah. And then seeing his dad, you know, we decommitted or we, we you know, we're not committing right now to Oregon and saying all this dumb shit. That's what made me be like, yo, I'm gonna, I'm gonna step out. Yet. Like, give the kid a chance to breathe a little bit, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, I'm gonna step out and, and, and check this. What's, What's the, the biggest celebrity ever? to ever hit on you that was like, woof? Oh my god. What, what? I hate it. I don't, I say I'm not one of these kiss and tell clout bitches. I hate that. But one of the biggest celebrities to hit on her and her, her you have to be like, no, nah, dog, this ain't it. Eminem. No shit. Yeah. Hey, I did not expect that. He, I made out with him. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> so, I've never told this story. Oh, I'm please. Just, I'm so embarrassed right now. No, tell the story. You don't have to if you don't want to. No, I mean, it's fine. It, I mean, it happened. So, I was with Jeremy Shockey. We were at this party, just platonic. We were just, Jeremy was huge in Vegas. And we went to this party um, at the Palms. And Eminem was there. And we were all just talking. And, um. Do you mind I, if I get a bookmark real quick? Mm -hmm. What year is this? Um, uh, I'm going to say maybe 2006. Right whenever him and Mariah were having beef, Eminem and Mariah. Because the first time, the first thing I asked Eminem was, I said, did you really f Mariah? And he was like, yeah, I f that bitch. And I was like, I knew it. And that's like how we bonded, you yeah. know? So then uh, they had like a penthouse upstairs and he's like, we, we had walked out of the party and he's like, are you going to come upstairs with me? And I was like, no. And he was like, he looked at me dumbfounded. He was like, you're not going to come upstairs with me? This and was I, after the makeout? Yeah. And I was like, absolutely not. I was like, I'm not a clout chaser. I'm not going to f you just to say I f you. I'm not embarrassed. Like when she talks about having a cabana boy in the bed when we first start talking, like I'm not, we're not weird like that. We're yeah. not what is that a weird boy? couple. Just like yeah. a little boy toy. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Like you. a little young. Uh, what is it? A cabana boy? Cabana boy. Cabana boy. Cabana, cabana boy. <laughs> yeah. boy. A dick yeah. with a pulse. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, a dick right. with yeah. a pulse. Baby arm. Yeah, that's what it is for sure. <laughs> she had one that had a dick dick on him, by the way. Really? Yeah, she showed you it to him. It was fucking wild. Because we were friends. I was like, yo, fucking terrible. The bigger they are, the more blood it takes to make them work and they don't work. Okay, I thought you were going to say something it was a fucking negative zero. So you'd rather have a smaller dick than a big yeah, dick. Yeah, that gets Flip fucking it. hard and Flip just it. like, you know, ready to go, baby. <laughs> so ready to rock. So say smaller dicks are way better than big dicks. Smaller dicks are way better than big dicks. <laughs> That's all we needed to the moon. So when Bunny comes into my life, I have to sit Bunny down. And man, this is the first time we've ever talked about this outside of her podcast. Mm -hmm. I have to sit Bunny down and go, look, I have a kid that you know about that I'm fixing to have to get full custody of. There's also a woman out there that's pregnant with a kid of mine. And Bunny's just like, man, that's a lot. She was like, but I got you, whatever. I don't have a house. I'm homeless. So she's like, well, the first thing we have to do is get you somewhere to live in Nashville. I was like, well, I can't put it in my name. I'm a felon. I don't have enough proof of income to get the kind of place we'd need to get her in the right school district. Bunny's like, let's just go get a condo so you have a bedroom for her. I'm like, all right, cool. So Bunny comes down and well, we're getting a condo. I'll never forget. Bunny looked at me and man, it makes me emotional. She said, no matter what happens with us, I'm going to help you get this little girl. And I was like, man, what character? You know what I mean? Like, what character this woman is like, look, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be with you, but I'm going to do everything I can to help you with this little girl. That's who, because, dude, I'm broke. I can't afford the lawyer. 
can't afford anything. I'm like, dude, I can't. What am I going to do? Put the kid in the van? Dude, I'm living out of like a 96 van. And Bunny's like, I'll help you. So Bunny bankrolled the whole shit. And she never talks about that. It's a true story. You've accomplished so much in such a short amount of time. It's like, where do we go from here? Mm, it's Amazing. scary. Stadiums. Stadiums. God willing, baby, man. Me and you, we were talking offline about how my dream is to do the last show at Nissan. That's like my dream. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, if I could get that last concert. Because somebody was like, what one would mean more to you, to play the last show at Nissan or the first show at Pinnacle or whatever Whatever bank's going to buy it? You know right, what I mean? Right, it's right. like, what would mean more? And I thought about it. That was a hard decision. I was like, I'd rather do the last show at Nissan because mm -hmm. that's the one I went to with my dad. And that's the one I took my daughter to. You know what right. I'm saying? So it's like there's that history. They're like new memories at the new stadium. But all my all my core memories are here at Adelphia Coliseum. You know what I mean? So it's mm -hmm. like, to me, it means more to play the last show of the old stadium than the first show of the new stadium. Do you remember BT coming, thinking I was actually gay when he came to the Titans? No. You don't remember that? He thought thinking, he was gay? So we were, he was with the Raiders the year before. Yeah. And I remember saying, like, we were on field goal. And I said to him, like, hey, man, if you didn't have that face mask, I would literally, I'd kiss you. You're so cute. You're this, that. And BT goes up to Ben Jones when he first gets to the Titans. Like, it was like OTAs. He's like, hey, what's the deal with 77? Is he, like, for real? And Ben's like, oh, yeah, he's gay, but, like, we don't, it's not out. Like, we just kind of yeah, keep it to ourselves. And we're tight around here. Sure. I know. <laughs> So I wrote him a note. I was like, hey, can't wait to get to know you. So cute, blah, blah, blah. Oh, my God. Big hugs, tiny kisses type of thing. And I put it in his locker. And, bro, he was... It, didn't, it took us like three, four months to even get... Well, yeah, it took us a couple months to even get back to neutral. The COVID year was interesting. Remember, when we, yeah. got the, remember when we got the week off and beat Buffalo? Beat the shit out of Buffalo. We literally said this ass whooping was we brought to you by right, Zoom. This is hilarious <laughs> yeah. because I remember that week. Obviously, guys, like, we couldn't work out together and stuff like that. Right. So we were just doing, like, Zoom meetings or whatever. And obviously, we destroyed the bills. And so, like, guys were like, next week after the game, like, Vrabes, like, I I mean, it's put on tape. We don't need to we practice. Don't, we don't got to practice. practice. Like, what we do don't we got to do anything. Bro, we can just get on Zoom, do our thing. We can work on our own and then come to the game, you know? To this day, probably the best game we've played collectively as a team. 100%. Yeah. No lie. Because I always hated tequila. Like, you know, everybody's got their bad party experience where they're like, yep. yak. Mine happened to be tequila. Your first time throwing up was tequila? Not like first time throwing up, but like <laughs> big moment of like, you know, this tasted awful and then it came up and i was at a wedding and got half in the trash can half on the bar nobody saw i turned around and walked off but from that moment it like it was like that time where you just had that that connection anytime i smelt it it was like oh, I, i'm about to be sick jaeger body bagged me in high school really? one time yeah and i have literally unless it's a vegas bomb i don't really do vegas bombs anymore but in college I would do those. Yeah. What was your Captain what was your, Morgan? Captain no Morgan? way. I Me, love yeah. Steve Morgan in yeah. college. You threw up? Oh yeah. What was the situation? It's actually no first year in college of age. It was me and four of the roommates, and we, between five of us, finished a handle, and it was downhill from there. Uh, and so since then, you don't even want to look at Captain Morgan. Don't even look, don't even look at it. And I was like yeah. that for, with vodka for a while, and I finally started to turn the leaf on vodka. Do I pee in the pool? Absolutely not. Well, I, okay, okay, oh. hold up. <laughs> Depends what type of pool. And whose pool it is. You got a pool. If you have a pool in your backyard, you got people I, over. Are you going to pee I'm in pissed. the pool? No, I'm, I am I will be, no pun intended, pissed if people piss in my pool. Then, you know, I don't. I, I expect an invitation, what? but you'll be upset with me. All right, then you're not. I, <laughs> I'm coming over, not, you know, brother. No, no. But if I'm in a, like, I grew up swimming in, like, competitively in, like, huge public pools. And sometimes you're in a long race. And it's like, you got to go, man. So, so that, you only that I will. when you're, uh -huh. like, in the middle of a big race. Sure. Yeah. And that's okay. I think so. Somebody else is it's coming volume right. volume of water, though. Volume of water. <laughs> you know, like the, the urine to water ratio, it oh, stays man. under. And those pools are so heavily chlorinated, it doesn't matter. I Mine's guess. a nice salt water pool that doesn't have much chlorine in it, and you got to keep it nice. So so you don't pee in the hot hot and cold tubs at the no, facility? No. Do you? <laughs> You've peed in the hot and cold tubs. Yeah. No, you haven't. Uh, yeah, I promise. Why would I lie to you? Uh, that's disturbing, Will. Bro, it's filled with high levels of chlorine and chemicals. That's way worse for us than, you know, a little bit of urine. That's a psychopath mentality right there. You know that. But the if you were out there on Austin Eckler, you know what we call that? What check we would give? House call. Milk check. What's the milk check? That's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Yo, you're 2%, brother. Yeah. But I love that. Milk check? Milk. Will milk, you milk. be like, hey, we got white linebacker out there. We're going. Double move. Milk. Do you have checks like that? <laughs> yeah, milk. Milk. <laughs> <laughs> just look at him. 
Look around and said milk. Oh, I think white guys don't belong in the NFL. Oh, okay. I'm just, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, 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 I'm just trying whoa, whoa, whoa. to get my bearings here. No. I mean, I don't think so. You guys got a stud. You guys got a stud couple, white on you, defense. Yeah. Matt, stud white. Yeah. 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 I'm Milano. But he's Italian. He's a different. Us whites, we get to claim him. We get to claim him. No, we get to claim him. white. He's not white. Stop saying that. Matt Milano is olive. Dude, it's an honor to be on the field and you're like the only Caucasian out there. It's got to be happening a lot more when you're on defense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when it's like noticed and the boys are like, hey, Will, you know you're the only white dude out here? And I'm like, trust me, I've noticed the entire time. <laughs> trust me. I've been yeah. waiting for somebody else to see yeah, this. I've been waiting for you guys to. So, yeah, Josh Allen doesn't like white guys on the field. No, I love them, oh, actually. Easy. <laughs> no, because I get, I, get I get to give a milk check. Yeah, 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 yeah a milk yeah. check. It's tough, man. And there are some bad body ballers out there. But you, I mean, you don't look like it when you have the, when, especially with all whites no, on. I, I, just, you just, I, just get exposed with the all white well, uniforms. Once I go, once I go back in, like I, I work hard and I, I get back into shape real quick. But like I, I teeter around two forty two. That's kind of my weight. That that's my fine weight, right? Two forty two. So I teeter for between two thirty eight and two forty four. Tell you what, two twenty five. I don't know if you'd be able to handle that yeah. kind of mass in the middle, brother. Two forty two, two forty four. That's my target hunting weight, dude. <laughs> <laughs> that's who I fucking seek out. Oh. Oh, yeah. You'd find it. You'd have no problem. Open no, field. no problem. Open field. <laughs> yeah. Josh Allen. Oh, what were you most nervous about doing podcasts after every game? Andy Reid. Oh, yeah. for real? Andy Reid. There was no, like, I was like, the first thing I thought, I was like, Coach Reed's going to kill me if I really do this. I feel like you just get him a greasy snack. Talk about the, the game. Talk, talk, like, talk about I need this. Just catch a ball on third and 10, and then yeah, we're good, right? Yeah. I'll tell you what, Coach, he does He does a good job of keeping guys in line, even though he likes to have fun with it, man. And uh, he's not a big, like, media guy. So when I, we actually got him on New Heights, it was, man, it was fireworks me and my brother were both sitting there like uptight like couldn't even Bro, it was so we were funny. just like going down the list of like questions just making sure that we like i don't know just asked them the yeah. right shit and didn't like wander off into telling too many stories about yeah. shit that we were probably gonna have to delete so incredible episode by the way yeah thank you man once you get your head coach on it's like all right everything's kind of fair game here that was with, with us and Vrabel. dude we got Vrabel to come on we're like we're good we're solid because well, we were nervous that, as as patriot tree we were nervous as brown too. Tree, yeah. oh for that yeah what kind of tipper are you Listen, man, you got to be a good tipper. I'm over 20%. Are you? Yes. Are you sure? 100%. There is some literature out there. That I'm not a good tipper? It's your frugal about tipping. It's your frugal about tipping. It might have been a reason you were dumped in the past. Oh, shit. That's good shit. That was a, that was a fun lead-in. No, no, that's that, uh, was that, was, that, was all, that was all blatant lies. Never coming on the show again. That was all blatant lies. Was it? Blatant lies. Mm. You're willing to stay on ten toes ground like this is where we are not intimidated One by your guys' takes? Dude, no. There's no way that that was real about my past relationship so if you get you go to a steakhouse let's say the bill's fifteen hundred dollars great service drinks came out fast the appies were quick what are you tipping fifteen hundred i'm probably going close to five nice I, I especially good food good service i'm here for it hypothetical situation you're at a coffee shop they go to insert your card they say okay sir just two questions right here and they flip the tablet on you mm -hmm. it says three four or five your coffee was 450 what are you pressing yeah, I'm probably going right in the middle. Right in the middle? Not, it, I'd feel weird tipping more than what I paid for the coffee. What was it like being a dad, having 12, 13-year-olds, finding themselves? You know what their uh, you know what their search history looks like on the Explore page? Yeah, it's like, Jen, it's like three, four, five, six knocks. Like, if yeah. the door's locked. Why is the door locked? We know why the door's Long locked. Long showers. Yeah. yeah. That's kidding. That's a tough deal. Yeah. It Have sounds you, like quarantine. It sounds yeah. like quarantine. You ever, you ever yeah. caught yeah. one of them? You ever caught one of them tugging it? Hell no. I would no. deny it if I did. Yeah? So you did? Wants to, so no, did. I did. No. 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 It's definitely Carter. No, I meant... I've... I've, I've caught Carter, but not Carter tugging it. Yeah. Not, not, <laughs> not, not in the middle somebody, of the deal. Somebody else was probably tugging it. Oh. <laughs> How did you feel when we had started that, the podcast at first? Because it was fairly newer, especially for players doing it then. Because you guys had just paid Taylor a boatload of money. I mean, I think we just said, just can we not do it during the season or whatever it was? I don't know. I mean, we we just, did have a sit-down conversation about it. I don't know if it was like, me that fun, came to you or... Because the Delaney one popped off, and that was like a, an IV story that he told. And it's like, oh, Titans. Yeah, because Todd got room, pissed. IV, whatever. And so yeah. you had to make an example uh, about like, hey, guys, they can right. take anything that you say and make it into right. a, a report. Right. And it's just, this is a long conversation. And wherever it goes from here, but it, it, the point was to the players, it is 
it gets going to get spliced up and it's going to get cut and edited by these these guys and you know who knows what's going to come out you know you wanted to say something i did <laughs> no, you, want, you want to say something i did <laughs> i want to say slap dicks <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you you didn't think you, you didn't have much of a thought on it at all you didn't really care no i didn't care no i mean i was like thought it was going to fall flat on its face but i you know i didn't care <laughs> i really had no idea what was gonna happen. i mean i was like see how this goes but i didn't care i don't think i had like a i mean it gave me like it was like free ammunition i could just give you guys shit yeah, at that any was point. tough that was yeah i was yeah, yeah literally the first year every team meeting i was like man i hope something doesn't come out about the pod i was just praying about it dude and we know your humor brother I, I respect it i respect your game don't get it twisted you better watch yeah, your, i remember when i remember watch your fucking tone with me brother <laughs> <laughs> we can step out we can wrestle we don't have to step out anywhere we can do that shit right in you've here been grabbing that knee a little too much you've been grabbing that knee a little too much i'm letting you know will will body bag you there ain't a fucking chance i will beat will's move the mic hey, 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 move hey, what's happening right now he's he's thinking about it right no, now. i'm not thinking he knows, about he it he knows he'd have to get a one two in before i had him i got my wherewithal with me I think you take Rabe's note. Wrestling? If you beat my ass, you come down, we'll fight. And then if you fight, if we fight, you can go do your podcast right in my office. For how many episodes? At the, at the facility? Yeah. What are the boundaries? What do you mean? Like, there's rules? I didn't know if you wanted a headgear. No. Or gloves or something. You got to wear a mouthpiece. You got to protect this shit. <laughs> 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 the nfl is a super like it, it can be homophobic a lot of yeah. guys like, we don't play that shit in the locker room so yeah. some dude be mouthing off to me uh we were playing the jags one time it was we were switching quarters so like we're like walking in the middle of the field because we're like on the 30 yard line so we have to go the opposite 30 yard line yeah. one defense alignment a three technique he's walking behind me like i'm here all day blah blah you can't block me <laughs> and i turn around i'm like bro you listen if that if, if you don't stop talking i'm gonna suck your dick and our center comes out of nowhere unprovoked he goes and we swallow here too by the way i have to mention because because i did see shane yesterday that he was like we if you can watch that it came out today i was like uh how was the what, beer olympics yeah. he goes you dodged a bullet <laughs> <laughs> he goes it sucked no he's lying <laughs> yeah, he did, he's he did. lying and i was like shut up he go, and then what we got into was <laughs> First of all, yes, he did show me bruise. He's like, this is a week old bruise. It's still yellow. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, here's what it is. You hang out with these guys and you're like, this is they're just good guys. Like they're regular guys. You go, but when you think, take these fucking assholes, these, uh, these pro athletes, and you just go, we're competing. <laughs> I go, this switch happens that you for, you forget that they're monsters. Like, they're actual, literal <laughs> monsters. He's like, dude, I had a guy grab me by my neck and hold me. He goes, I thought we were playing. I thought we were, like, f***ing around. And then, Is this you? That's me. <laughs> He's talking about me. He goes, I got beat the f*** up. And I was drunk, so I didn't know what was happening to me yeah. until the next day. And he was like, it hurts so bad. Dude, this is why Shane's such a bitch. Okay, tell me, tell me. Because <laughs> that whole wrestling, that's me and oh, Shane. Yeah. <laughs> that's a fucking... Yeah, he looks like he's suffering right there. That doesn't <laughs> yeah, look yeah. like. Do you have any good Jameis Winston stories? Jameis is an is an unbelievable teammate. I I I haven't even gotten to spend all that much time with him. I really really I'm looking forward to it. My most my most recent cue of of what Jameis was for me. We got in the huddle to call take a knee at the end of the game, and we go and that's that was our situation for the day. It was like the first day, green right tight take a knee, right? Jameis gets in there and I. And for the life of you, can't tell you what he said. It was something like, it was something like, all right, boys, big dub up. Let's go get this bitch on three. <laughs> no, so shit. I was like, what the f And so I line, I line up and like, with, oh, like we just take a knee. It's not a big deal, right? And so I'm jogging off the field. One of my tight end buddies, Lucas Kroll, comes up and he's like, what the f did he just call? And so I was, I was confused. I'm, I'm still confused, Jamal. I have no idea what you said. I'm almost like, you know, like, so is he like cancer free? Cause you haven't done a whole, a lot of talking about, not that you should be doing it, but yeah, exactly. you do have that up in there. It's like, man, he's out it's there funny. playing right now. Like, should he be out there in the, are they yeah. taking care of my guy out there? Should he be out there yes. playing? I have one last scan and that will be another, uh, I think that'll be another PET scan. They shoot you with radioactive sugar basically. And you go in and you, you do it. The sugar basically targets the parts of your body that are consuming it. So like, it'll go to your brain your heart but then the other parts that pop up on the scan those are the parts that are that are eating up the sugar and those are considered to be cancerous so for me i had them here and i had some i had some here i'll have that i'll have one last scan to see how much those have gone down due to the rituximab and after that if i go on there and see like a limited amount of of black spots i will in my own head have rung the bell and i would have been done in remission at that point mm -hmm.
Michigan has three different secret societies. It's like Order of Angel, Phoenix, and then there's one more. I forget what it Bang is. Bang over the head, you don't know where you're going. Yeah, this yeah. sounds badass. I got tapped for it one day, and it was like an like I got tapped at like 9 p.m. at night, and I didn't get home till five in the morning. And I had a bag over my head at one point. Like it was well calculated. They said, hey, you're getting tapped for this society. You either enter, you're out. You have to say right now if you're in. I was like, all right, I'm in. And then I'm like, okay, walk outside. They leave me. And then I'm waiting there for three, four minutes. And all of a sudden, some guy with a cell phone walks by. I'd never seen him in my life. And he goes, it's for you. And I have the, now I have a random cell phone. And they're making me go different places in the university doing specific things. And I end up at this one house and they put a bag over my head and they put this metal music on. They drive me for 20, 30 minutes. I, I have no idea what the actual no time idea was, but it was a long time. And they're like forcing me to answer these questions and not forcing me. They're asking me these questions. And I'd answer them like that wasn't good enough. Answer it better. And I'm like trying to figure out what the f these people want from me. And then like you go through like a hell week and it's like right in the middle of spring ball. And so yeah, I would do spring wow. ball. And then like right at 7 p.m. I'd go to wherever I had to go. It was all like very secret. Like you couldn't tell people what you were doing. Like I couldn't tell my girlfriend. Like it was a wild, a wild time. Yeah. But the whole idea was like taking like the 25 most influential people, influential students yeah, yeah. at the university and putting them in one room for the betterment of the university. And there's a 100% turnover every single year. There's like calls and chants you have to do. There's like you have your name with a jingle behind it and like how you present yourself. Like there was rules and a whole bunch of stuff you had to follow. And you meet secretly er like every Monday at 10 p.m. during the like during the school year. It was nuts. I remember one time talking to a super rich dude that said like he was trying to buy a house and uh, he said, you know, because with the master bedroom only had one bathroom and he said it like that and I was like what like master bedrooms only like they have two full bathrooms and but in the moment when they say it you're like yeah dude screw that house yeah. are you out of your mind why were you yeah, gonna feel like how you. embarrassing is that that they they built a house with just one bathroom in the master bedroom yeah. the 30,000 square foot house yeah and he's like they didn't, they didn't have two bathrooms in the master bedroom you're like well that's I'm glad you didn't buy it <laughs> yeah you know what they deserve yeah. it yeah, yeah. yeah they, yeah. they literally just house say like, never oh, sell yeah and that's a good point that house, yeah. yeah you start realizing like my stupid house I got one bathroom in yeah. the master bedroom and I look like an idiot. I hope God he never comes over. I hope, yeah. yeah. You can't invite him. <laughs> like, yeah, just... man, that's crazy. You look out the window. Yeah. Like, yeah. I gotta change my bathroom. Yeah, I didn't even know that was a possibility to want two bathrooms in a yeah. bathroom. Like, that's a dream that you're like, I didn't even know you, I could even have that dream. But now, I'll think about every day. When I'm doing like two full bathrooms. When I look at my... Ba two yeah. bathtubs, two showers. In the master bedroom. That doesn't make any two sense. Well, that's that's unpractical. And next time you look at your dumb wife brushing her teeth next to you, you're like, you should be in your own bathroom room and you're just <laughs> furious like you go what are we doing all crammed in here yeah pissed off dude. yeah you gotta yeah. share a sink angry. for our dude wipes question yeah partnered with dude wipes what is the shittiest moment of your career there's been a bunch I'm trying to think i bombed on a cruise once and so you're on the boat with these people and get, get off i remember boat. like i had to do three shows and so i do the first two shows one show goes the point when you would do them you'd have to do three shows of half an hour so you'd have to do a half hour clean half hour dirty and then you'd have another show that's like a half hour and so this is a show actually that a lot of crowd, crowd work comics that can do crowd work are very good at because it's like that's kind of the best thing because you can just mm -hmm. go do talk to the crowd every every crowd's different every show is different because you're talking to the crowd but for me i didn't have like enough I, i'm not a crowd work person i don't know how to do it and then i'm not great at it and then so i go do it and like i just bomb like because they they've all heard the jokes because i've only had like basically an hour so i split them up into the two of those 30 minute shows and then in the third show i was like well maybe those people won't come back well they come back they just and i wrote i remember after the show i wrote an elevator with guys and they were saying, they were like, yeah, there, there's just two comics. And they go, this one comic was great. The other guy, they loved him. And on me, they go, that other guy is like, not good. And I mean, I am, my shoulder is touching that man who's saying that. But I have a, like my hat on and not that he would know me. So that was a pretty tough, like I was in, uh, I was in an elevator in the ocean. I think it's a moment that you would think you'd be happy. <laughs> and instead, you just, I mean, I'm just, ne and I just got off whatever floor was the next floor. I just walked off. Let me see if I can make it here. Yeah, let me see group. if I can make it. Yeah. Cause you can be whatever in your own little small thing but you gotta always change it up so then you can be like let me see if i can run with these yeah, guys i'm with you growing up yeah. in bonterra when i went to college i was like oh shit yeah black guys play football yeah you know <laughs> let me see if i start yeah, yeah. let me see yeah. if i can run with yeah. these guys yeah how did it work out for you at first in uh college yeah you you know it's intimidating yeah you know how it is right oh, absolutely yes like it's it's intimidating but it's like once you get that first compliment dude hey this white boy can play that's all you're it takes like, that's yeah. all if you hear, hey you're pretty this for a white yeah. guy it's yeah. like, okay we've yeah we're yeah, making it out yes. here that's what that's you're what like, you're doing i might be one of the best athletes of all time then. yeah yeah, yeah there's no question about it i can point them out now let me ask you you live in a locker room long enough you know you know the types. Well, who I don't know if you've spoken about this on the show, but who that, that you haven't seen? Okay, so can't be the who do you think has the biggest dick in the NFL right now? 
I know, just off couple, looks alone. A couple can jump out at me right, right. now. I know. You've seen a lot. Because you've seen them all. So the one you might know for sure, but like, who is it? Fuck. Just the biggest, fattest, uncircumcised in the NFL. What you haven't seen, I'm saying oh, about what you haven't think. seen. What you think, because oh, I've seen them all. Fuck. That's a good question. Yeah. It's got to be a DB. You think? Or a wide receiver. You think so? Yeah, dude, the big boys, all that meat on dude, the I tummy like, pulls it away. I think DeAndre Hopkins might have something. Oh, That's what I was thinking yes, about. bro. Hopkins was in my head. He, has five, he wears 5X gloves. 5X gloves. He's kind of got that guy. slender, that's athletic He got the, he got the shoulders forward dude, walk. That's, oh, you got the shoulders does, forward you, you walk. Got the hunt, you that's what I thought. Short forward, forward walk, big hands, yeah. slender body. Peace. Known yeah. for sex parties? No, is he? I, it's rumored. It's been rumored to me. You know what, too, is I might be cheating a little bit because Ben Jones did tell me that it's a fucking monster. Well, that's good, though, that I got to say it because I didn't know that. Boom. And I was thinking I, it. So that that has to be the he has to have a huge dick. I got to do a show with him um, a few years ago called The Ultimate Beastmaster uh, that I got fired for because I said it was like this uh, international competition. And like Tiki and I were the host of Team USA. But then like everybody had teams like Team Britain, Team India, Team China. And when you fell off the obstacle course, on the Ultimate Beastmaster into the water, you got like eliminated and they called it the Beast Blood. And so we were doing the show like, you know, forever, like a week. And then the producer in my ear was like, hey, Chris, like um, when this next competitor goes up, like just give us like an alt name for the Beast Blood. I was like, all right. So it was a comp Chinese competitor and he went up and I was like, I don't have anything. And then as soon as he fell, his name was Bin Fung. As soon as he fell, I was like, as he was falling, I was like, oh shit, I got it. I got it. And I, and I said, I swear to God, I had like a moment. I was like, if I say this, I'm probably going to lose my job. But like, I have to say this. And, and he hits it. And then they're like waiting. And I go, I went, there goes Bin Fong into the duck sauce. And, 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 and Tiki dude was dying laughing. I get called to the booth, fired. <laughs> oh, during the show? See ya. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then it was like the last day anyway. And I mean, dude, Tiki and I still like, I just saw him a couple weeks ago. Like we, every time he sees me, he's like, I cannot, I still cannot believe you did that. But he was like, it was one of the best moments in my life to just call my wife and be like, you never can believe what this kid Chris just did. And how much did you get paid to go to college? I wish, man. I was on my way to going to Alabama though. We probably would have got some bread. No question. I didn't get none though. I mean, it's not but Alabama. But my people man. wouldn't take none though, huh? So they nah. were trying to? Nah. Nah, they was they yeah they was there they was going they was going they was going to show some love they was going to show Alabama some love. it's like almost like they almost yeah, say it's it. almost, they almost say like, at this point like they pay people yeah they yeah, definitely. we had Derek on the pond he's like I got paid in rinks which is a hell of a thing to say yeah crazy. that shit goes hard I went on a visit everybody got Chryslers you know it's crazy <laughs> say that again yeah. everybody everybody at the dorm had a Chrysler <laughs> had a Chrysler Chrysler three hundred three hundred three hundred Chrysler like Jeeps I'm like bro what's up how y'all Chrysler three hundred has got to be no the way. number one drug dealing car come on there's no way they said they hook it up when you get there systems. Rams. Yeah. You've been somebody who seems to be like one of the leaders of that running back group. Where do you see this market going? How do you see all this shifting? Like, what is the strategy in your mind as you see it from a bird's eye view? Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's been a new narrative that's been coming out because of the, the contract situation that's going on. And for us as running backs right now, I think it's important for us to talk about it. What we can do is one thing, which I think is amazing, is keep doing what we're doing right now as far as playing. Like, keep making a huge impact on your team. There's average players in the NFL, but then there's the the outliers and those outliers are the guys that are setting the new markets pushing the, the boundaries and the reason they're doing that is because they're not the average so when we have these narratives that are coming out where they're comparing the outliers to the average it really hurts us mm. you know and that that's not fair to those guys you know you can't say oh well running backs in general only get this many yards well, what about those guys what about you know josh jacobs who just ran for 1600 yards and all those touchdowns and basically carried the rate the Ra uh, raiders offense you know what about zaquan what he's been doing you know tony pollard those guys that are not the average right and when you compare them to that you could probably justify yeah you shouldn't be paying anything but you could do that for every position you know right. why are you doing that for the for the running backs right now and so for us what i want us to do and what we've decided is let, let's keep talking about it. let's try to change this narrative let people know that hey we can still make a big impact and you see that you go ask the giants how big of a you know impact saquon is on the field right to when he's not on the field for us it's it's talking about that and so people understand that you cannot compare the outliers to the average and then justify paying them because of that you never thought about going to the university of south carolina yeah it was an option it was an option <laughs> <laughs> oh, our boy Jay Hove. Hove, he's a big, he's a gamecock. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. That's why I was going to commit. And what then, happened? Uh, he went to Clemson. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, he said nothing. On the you day when I went to commit, I just picked the Clemson hat. Wait, 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 wait. I That's grabbed. Not, I, I, that I, is I, so I crazy. Hey, I go, swear. To to I Carolina. told my family I'm going to South Carolina. It was like 30 minutes from the crib. I'm like, yeah, we going there. And then on commitment day, I grabbed the South Carolina hat, put it down, grabbed the Clemson one. My mom yeah, was like, what are you no doing? What are you doing? <laughs> 
fucking way. <laughs> He's confused. There's no way you just you had that opinion. But it's crazy because I had a commitment day, and my coach, my high school coach, had a long talk with me because he knew I was going to South Carolina, but he wanted me to go to Clemson. And he had a long talk with me before, like we had to delay the thing and all. What and were the he points? Was what were the points Clemson, he was giving so you? Clemson. What were like the what was the reason why you shouldn't? Uh, he go was to... just talking about quarterback situation. Uh, South Carolina didn't have like a real elite quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like Clemson got some guys coming in. Uh, receivers. I had to learn from Sammy and them. South Carolina didn't have nobody. But that was my main thing. I'm like, I go to South Carolina, I'm going to be the star. Like, I'm going to go right now, be the star. Mm -hmm. Get a little had. bit of cash. Did you get a little bit of cash? Nah. <laughs> 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 Johnny Manziel doc just came out. You know, everybody kind of talks right. about you it. You can't get in trouble anymore. NIL's a thing. Clemson's yeah. clean clear. Yeah, yeah, nah. You got some cash. I ain't got no cash. <laughs> New car? No. Herbert or? Herbert, bro. It don't matter who you Phillip say. Rivers. Phillip Rivers. Oh, uh, see, now you, I, 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 see, you making it tough. I like yeah. Phil was my guy. Rivers. Nah, but I don't know. That's tough. That's a tough. They different, different quarterback. Being a uh, say, like being a defensive guy, what was it like playing with somebody like Phil? Phil was like everything. He was like the coach, the player, the quarterback. I mean, so he kind of did everything. He made all the line checks. You know, they, they they different players. Like I said, did you ever get chewed out by him? Was there ever a time he gave you a, a dig nabbit or anything like that? No, we used to try to make him uh, get on his nerves to make him try to, you know, get mad at the defense. So that was yeah. our goal, try to get him. You, you know, wanted him to curse. Yeah, I wanted, I wanted to see if we you can get You want to hear an F-bomb. Yeah, 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 but it never happened. It never happened? Never. What a guy. Who talks the most trash that you've come across? I don't really get people that talk trash really like that to me. Like, There's never been anybody you're like, man, why is this dude talking? Shit, you was talking trash in London when we was... <laughs> Hey, nah, I remember, I remember, bro. Yeah. Oh, shit, yeah, when we played y'all, you, he probably was the last person that was talking trash to us, yeah. Yeah, we, uh, For real. we were with your equipment guys earlier, and they were yeah, bringing bro. that up, how I was talking the whole time. Like, hey, look, man, why are you talking so crazy to our whole team? You remember that, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, oh, they yeah. reminded me, of because I probably wouldn't have remembered too much. I do. Yeah, it was I him. do talk a lot of shit. We lived a little bit of a different lifestyle in college yeah. than I did. Yeah, I was a little bit more straight-laced, and he was not that. He wasn't that way? He was, well, we've been... Been kind of like peas and carrots since I met him. He, I actually hosted him on his recruiting visit. No shit. Oh, no yeah, shit. When he came to, to care because I was one year older than him. And I could tell right away, I'm like, this guy, you know, he was looking for a good time. He was looking for some fun. Yeah, what you taking to do? What was, yeah. your, what was your recruiting? We went to the horse track. Oh, no I think shit. We did. I think we did. I don't know if that's Must have been nice. You guys win anything or, or what? Anymore. For the NIL stuff, I feel yeah. like everything's legal now. That's you can right. do whatever you want. No, we had, uh, we kind of hit it off. And then we ended up playing, the two of us ended up playing on the, like, we did line changes at receiver. He and I were always in the game together and he was he was exactly as you would imagine you know hand under the face mask always yeah. trying to create some kind of mayhem Pretty. yes yeah the type of guy you want around right. you, you do need that he's bruiser. a lot of fun i've never been around him and not had fun there's a legendary tale of mike Vrabel saying that he would cut his piece off to win a super bowl said that in 2019 uh, something like that they went to the they went to the AFC championship and then he said no i actually won't do it and then they you guys lost we lost to the kids if he would have just held right on to he it said he would actually not cut his piece yeah. off. Yeah, yeah 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 i guess what the segue is here is what are you willing to do to win a super bowl <laughs> just, lost i want to work years. hard <laughs> 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 i might give a finger or something yeah, but I no mean, i'm not no i'm not doing that that's not happening for you that. no uh -uh. we go over to boston now here's where my turmoil uh, turmoil and my heartache and uh my all my adversity is i go to la with two cans of Zins. Now, I go through two cans of Zins a day. LA is a communist country because they don't serve flavored Zins. Fine, but they still have Zins, so I get myself a few cans of the chills. Get back, I think to myself, oh, I'm going to get back to Lake Country. I have a literally a fleet of Zins there, nothing to worry about. I have to go to Calgary. Guess what they don't have in Calgary, boys? Nicotine. So now I'm a guy who for the last, let's call it three years of my life, have gone through two cans of Zins a day to going to zero. I can't tell you how much my family pissed me off for those two days. I was in Calgary and Talon said something to me. She said something like, hey, can you do this? Can you do this for me? And I looked at her and go, do I look like, do I look like your fucking assistant? <laughs> and she's like, obviously, it was like, go f*** yourself in a hurry. Even in my mind, like, I don't know if any of you guys have quit nicotine or heroin. It's hard because, like, you know what you're saying and doing and feeling is wrong. And you know that the feelings you're having are because a lack of something else. But you also don't give a f so you're like, she gets mad at me. So I'm thinking enemy. And so I'm coming at Taylor. Literally like two days ago, Taylor, we're on the phone. She's like, Taylor, I love you. I will never go through another nicotine like situation with you where you have to quit. So luck of this whole fire thing, I'm actually 12 days sober. My shout out, no free shout out is going to go to ice cream. <gasps> Had it three days in a row yeah. over the weekend. Thank you. Do we hit the twisted question? <laughs> get those cans back up. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god, yo. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that's so fucking funny. I think the mainstream media is dialed in on the Chiefs losing this year. I don't think they'll win the division. You don't think the Chiefs I, win the division? I think the, the reign is over. Now they might get into the playoffs, but they're not going to win the division. I think this is the year where the Chiefs' kingdom falls. I believe in the Raiders. I believe in Jimmy G. The boys got Josh Jacobs back. And you got to think right now, they don't have Chris Jones in that building in Kansas City. And then without Chris Jones, number one, they're not the greatest defense anyways. But then without Chris Jones, they're abysmal on defense. They need to have Chris Jones. But if they go into the year with not having him, like it's just going to make it that much, it's going to be that much more of a hole. And yeah, they are thinner at receiver than years past. And I do think this is the time where all the hot dogging out there by uh, Patrick Mahomes, it catches up to him. What's it like knowing that everyone who didn't draft you first overall in fantasy is probably eating their words right now? What, what's it like knowing that you're carrying a lot of fantasy teams out there? Um, man, I mean, it, hey, it's a long year. You know, I think we God, all know that. Dang, so, he's so doing it. He's me, doing it. For me, I'm not focused on, you know, one game. It's, it's got to happen. It's got to keep going throughout the whole year. Do you ever think about it when you're going off? You're like, oh, yeah teams are hitting right now i know the boys are hype i do not no i don't never think never oh <laughs> dude dude uh, Can you imagine that <laughs> just imagine I, that anytime i've gotten a tackle i'm like well if somebody slipped me in on their defense like they're getting yeah. a 12 yard, 12 yeah. yard run league. like that's yeah. a point if they only knew yeah, that's a point a reception ppr league that's oh that's a point. a point that's a point you're not thinking yeah. that to yourself at all <laughs> you gotta be thinking i'm going crazy because i remember we're playing like aj brown would be going off people would be like hey your fantasy's like oh dog my fan i'm killing him on fantasy right now <laughs> like in the middle of the game like the third quarter yeah i mean if someone brought it like as a joke yeah no, like, I'm, I'm not like sitting there and in, in yeah. game like every Every time I score, that's six for the boys. You know, <laughs> hey, that would be six for the boys. Well, you should you should write that six for the boys on your shirt under the jersey. Oh yeah, and lift it up. That six for the boys should have drafted me. Yeah, hey, yeah. That is, that's, yeah. That's like the most un Christian McCaffrey thing ever. But it would be yeah. dope to see. Yeah. We're gonna do a tear talk real quick for you. Best post game snacks. If you're looking at the cabinet and you see the candies, you see the salties, you see the sweets. But then you see a bag of blue Cool Ranch Doritos. That's your first. That's your first get. You're willing to look to some other choices as well, but you're not passing up on Cool Ranch. You're getting that immediately, and then you're thinking, "What else am I gonna get?" So that's my tier one. Tier two would be peanut M and M's. That's a good one too. That's a good yeah. one. So tier three, honestly, because of what you pick, tier one and tier two, I would probably go with something a little bit lighter. Like they got the Boom Chicka Pop popcorn. So if you're finishing up a series on the plane, it's a five hour flight from Pittsburgh back. I'm thinking I, if I'm going to eat when I'm back at home, I'm going to be a little bit lighter on my third. So I'm going to go with the Boom Chicka Pop. It says how it's low calorie right there. So you figured it's got to be good for you. And, uh, you finish your show with something lighter. Quick break, quick hydration break. Busting with the Boys is brought to you by Body Armor's newest product, the Flash IV. It's time to reach real hydration with Body Armor Flash IV. Packed with electrolytes, zinc for added immune boost, and no artificial sweeteners, flavors, or dyes. No bullshit. Flash IV provides the rehydration your body needs, whether you are feeling under the weather, had an intense workout, or you just had a long weekend in a case of the Sunday scaries are sitting at your door heading into the next week. Head over to Body Armor, to the Body Armor store on Amazon and get yours today. Um, Body Armor, man, my favorite one specifically, I've been drinking on this one. This is my third one today, but the Strawberry Kiwi uh, Flash IV, incredible tasting. You might think there's a lot of sugar. No, there's only 15 grams. So enjoy, hydrate, be for the boys. Any big plans for your birthday? My wife's doing something for me. I don't know what it is. Yeah. And surprises, I love them when they're happening. However, the way my routine brain operates, it fucking throws me off. She drove my ass to that fucking wolf park. Where we hung out with wolves all day long. That was fucking awesome, but I was pissed. I'm not lying, boys. We packed the car up. We drive to Montgomery, Alabama, night one. And I'm thinking, yeah, hey, sweetheart, like, is it here? Is it in Alabama? I don't know what's going to be in Alabama that's going to get my rocks off and yeah. you're going to fire me up. And she but won't tell you. No, she won't tell me. We got to stay in the hotel overnight. And she's like, all right, just to, you know, I'm like, how long is the drive today? This morning. We got to get up and leave by like eight or nine in the morning. I'm like, how long? The drive's not going to be long. Probably three more hour drive. And by the time we're, we're in the fucking, we were driving back from Athens, like on the windy roads or whatever, say you're in it like that. I'm thinking, what in the 
fuck is gonna be wherever we're going that you think I'm gonna be so excited about? And why couldn't we fly? Like at this point, <laughs> why couldn't we? Why fly? couldn't we fly? What's the closest airport? Where yeah. are we at? But then we pulled up. I was like, I don't, sweetheart. I go, I don't know what you're about to see, but I'm just gonna tell you right now. I think it's gonna be that you're gonna be surprised about me being upset about this. Because unless we're see, swimming with orca whales at this point, I don't know what we're doing. But we pulled up to this uh, wolf reserve, and it was. Awesome. So anyway, I do love the surprises once they're happening. However, I fucking, but she did say, listen, relax. It's going to be chill. The boy just, his head gets in a blender. Yeah. However, love the surprise. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Will. Happy birthday to you. Thanks, boys. That boy, that. 47 years old today. The <laughs> oldest fuck. 33, right? 34, man. Oh, my oh. God. I know. Spankings. I know. Get up. You want those spankings? I'm going to get you the spankings, brother. You want me to penny on the couch like I did in that first podcast, your first uh -oh. birthday? If you want that, take your shirt off. Come on. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you four for 34. How do you want me? I want you. How do you, you want, want me all 34? He's lazy. I'm about to fucking... Paddle his ass. Hang on. Now. And get his ass. How do you want me? I want you. <laughs> you want me? Put your hands there. Hands are on this? Hands there, yeah. Arch your back a little bit for me, too. Oh Ready? <laughs> One, two, three, four. He's out. I was hoping so God, so bad you would not fart. Oh, you were about to go and I clinched them boys up. You alluded to your uh, last stop a minute ago. How refreshing has it been to to play in Seattle? Oh man, it's been a, it's definitely been a, a total kind of 180 from you know 2018 to 2019. What I had to deal with over there, it's been it's been amazing. But I will say, you know, that was one of the first things Pete told me when he traded for me. He was just like, "Hey, we're gonna let you be you. You know, enjoy who you are. I know you like to have fun. You like." to joke and do all those things. BU will never take that from you. And for me, it's been the best football I played in my career. So, uh, you know, I, I always give credit to those guys and I always tell them, you know, how much I appreciate them from, you know, uh, kind of saving me from, uh, I had a little joke back in the day. I was like, I, I came from the shit house to the penthouse and uh, it's kind of what it's been, bro. It's been like that since, hey, I, since I've got here. Do we have any rock, paper, scissors coming up on the radar in the future? We talk, oh, for sure. We I talk, go scissors like 99% of the time. Yeah, I like that head game you're playing right now. Setting up the entire world to slip them, George. <laughs> Just wait till I actually go scissors again, and I'm gonna beat up. So I'm gonna beat so many people. I can't wait. No, you're, you're in Double my down. head because now I don't know what to. I'm gonna be ready because it's gonna be a touchdown. I need you to seek out the camera, and I'm literally going to be playing you in right, rock paper scissors. <laughs> Yo, know, that is. That doesn't need I'm gonna to try to get it on the. I'm gonna try to get on the pylon, the the end zone pylon. Like die for it, knock it over. It's gonna be sideways. I'm be laying next to it. I'm just gonna rock paper scissors while laying on the ground. <laughs> that would be so elite, dude. Yo, how nice, how good is Christian McCaffrey? Yo, oh, I see you wearing dude. that hat right now. I saw him jump over a DB. <laughs> Yo, that is so awesome. I need that hat. Thank you. I need that. Grace. I know. Sin, sin. Oh, I love that, man. God, and there's no one that it's supports their teammates more than George Kittle, it seems like. Have you always been that way? Oh, yeah, dude. I love free stuff. You, if any of my teammates give me a shirt or a hat to wear, I'll wear it anywhere and everywhere, baby. I'm a proud 49er supporter. I'm for the boys. I was you wearing are your for, for the, the boys. boys shirt this morning. I got one. I got a good one. I got a good one. Shit that'll get you beat. You flying in the chick and she wearing the other, another dude's jersey on your team, man. That shit get you beat. You know that dude on the <laughs> thinking, like, did he smack her? Did he smack her? Like, did I just fly in the thought? Like, you know what I'm saying? Has that, hap <laughs> has that happened to you? That ain't never, that ain't gonna never, that ain't never happened to me. But it, it happened to dudes. I'll play, I ain't gonna say no names, but I'll be looking at the set like, he flew her in, she rocking my Jersey, do I know her? <laughs> That's pretty wild. Man, that's tough. That's tough. Yeah. It's demoralizing as a man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like I like if that happened to me, I don't think I could like I don't think I can get erection around that girl. If that happened to <laughs> yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Or if you do, you're just disappointed. You're like, Of course, I, yeah. Like, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, you're like, man, I'm a cuck. <laughs> yeah. Would you let your wife and daughter wear my jersey to the game if we was on the same team? No. What do you know? <laughs> Hell no, bro. She shouldn't be my wife if they if my, my and he said my daughter. I'm just thinking little Rue right now, right? the lady jersey what we doing i'm out here covering punts and shit what we talking about but listen i mean people are gonna love him because of what he did in the past but it will as you know like sometimes you just don't got it anymore <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> it's as you know. You just don't got it anymore. Were you ever part of a squad where you guys would hit the street like or not like not like locally, but you would go somewhere, travel somewhere for a quick night? Yeah, when I was in San Francisco, bro, that you know, I told you this before. When I was in San Francisco, we kind of like hung out a lot. And after we win games, because San Francisco was so close to Las Vegas, we'll take flights. Boom, we get it. They have a party bus waiting for us. We jump in that party bus, go hit that airport, straight to Vegas, <laughs> party here for a day, come back. You know, we have Mondays off, so we knew we can get it back Monday. You know, everybody be at the facility in the steam room. That's when you know, be like, okay, yeah, that was, that was a good night, right? We that's when your steam room, hey, night. that's your, when your steam workout started. Your steam room workout started. That's how my steam workout started, you know what I mean? I got used to it, but man, in San Fran, we used to do it a lot. Every time we won, we went somewhere as a group we turned up turned out and still made it back and was able to you know do our workouts and, and, and all that craziness but we used to get it in in san francisco or like late 2000s around 2008 2010 11 we was we was turning up we used to have the best hookup at a pumpkin patch over at Stu Leonard's, his name was Francisco oh yeah yeah he used to save me the best pumpkins on the patch <laughs> It's, it was a grocery would you, would, you have, would you have to pay for him? Yeah, I would give or him. My, just I would like. Up. I would tip him out. Like, hey, when you see like perfect, perfect pumpkins, put them aside. This was like 2000 and like 18 around there, 2017, 18, 19 actually. I would just you know have his number, text him when the pumpkins came around. Like, hey, same thing as last year. Yeah. Put a couple nice ones to the side. <laughs> get a good, well, you see a couple nice ones. Yeah. Tip them out. What's a nice pumpkin though? What's a nice pumpkin to you? Like, what is a nice Ooh. pumpkin? Like what, a what, nice... what, what does that look like to you? <laughs> So it's kind of like like a perfect, not a circle, but like fatter, like a fat like half half moon on each side, kind of. You half know, with with all the, all the grooves like perfect. Yeah, are you like deep grooves, or you yeah, kind of like you want deep, a little deep? You deep. like the deep groove. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fuck, you, I you love like, pumpkins. You like a thick stem? I like a thick stem. Yeah, thick stem coming out, where you can just grab it. Oh yeah, hundred yeah. percent. You like a taller pumpkin, or you kind of like a more like, like a short, like a bully, kind of like, like my bully. body, like short and wide, like that. <laughs> You know, you can't help but think about it with that. There was like a 30 for 30 episode with the referee and the basketball, that documentary. Yeah. It's like, yeah. you you just think like, man, some of this stuff they do, like people with the high integrity in the referee world, like you have to, it's almost like it has to be like a fluid, you know, test, exam, whatever it might be, because it's like, you just have no clue what goes on, especially if you have 17 officiating teams, seven on each one. A lot of people, sevens. and that was always my, my one of my biggest fears when I was at the league office. What if we have like an NBA situation with gambling and things like that? So the league, the league has groups that they they look at the betting lines they look at how calls officials calls are impacting the lines how they're impacting games they look the, the officials go through a crazy security check bank records they talk to their they go knock on doors and talk to their neighbors before they're hired any kind of business relationships any kind of conflict of interest it's like it's really to get hired as an NFL official, you go. I I don't know of other jobs that that have that level of scrutiny, you know, coming in. Like, is it like a such a straightforward criteria to where if referees were in this new uh, wave of the gambling and everything else, to where they graded just above and be like, okay, I can have a down game here because I'm grading out so well on the year? No, dude, you're absolutely a hundred percent right. And this is something we always guarded against in terms of with the evaluations because a lot of officials they would keep track of their grades and they're like okay i'm at this level i can't afford another another missed call so i may not throw my flat you know so that it has an impact because that's right you think about just psychologically that can happen so we always try to like guard against that and create an evaluation system where it wasn't solely just so objective where it was like, okay, your grade is based on your calls. You got right. 100 calls during the season. You got 93 right. You're 93%. There was some subjective elements added in terms of like, you know, you have your supervisors, you're they're grading them on, on other things. So they're not just solely grade-based, call-based, because like you said, then, you know, if I know I can't get another incorrect call, I might be less likely to throw my flag and you can't officiate that way. Right. You're just... You're, 
it, it's a problem. What's your there expectation go. <laughs> going into the third week of November this year? What's your, you know what? Scratch that. <laughs> Here we what's, go. What's your coming. expectation for Ohio State this year? Uh, our big expectation, man, just like every year, man. For us, it's, it's natty or nothing. Uh, I know you being a, a, a Team of North guy, uh, you have your own Scared opinion. And I respect it. I respect it. And yeah, I, I can't talk too much. I, I didn't beat y'all. So I have respect for those guys over there. I, I don't like y'all, but it's respect. And I think that team over there talking to the D.C., uh, 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 Mike, who's with the Ravens now, I, I, my first time actually talking to him and since we played him in 2021, um, and he had a lot of respect for me. Seeing a Joe Boo, I, I got to see Hutchinson. It's all respect after, you, after you're done playing in that game because we know how hard that game is if you've played in there. So um, it's not from respect for me. Um, I'm still a little bitter from it, uh, just being honest. But this year, I hope we get you guys and we get to go to the Big Ten Championship and win a natty, man. So that's the goal for us every year. Uh, but that's the big game every year. So uh, I'm excited to see what happens this year. Missouri. Yeah, you did Missouri. get a little wider out there. Oh, a lot of white folks. You said when you were at, in high school, you were pants down to your damn knees. Oh, yeah, yeah. All so, that stuff. So, uh, you know, coming from Pomona, California, first time in, in Missouri, you know, I'm walking around. I'm like, damn, you know, it's it's because it's predominantly a white school. So I'm like, I never talked to a white girl in my life. So I get to the school. I'm like, God damn, it's some bad white chicks. You know, they look like they eating stuff and they got, they got butts. <laughs> Usually I didn't, you know, come from California, you don't see that. They straight back. It's an eye opener. You know, I'm trying to get at this girl. She's like, ugh, don't touch me. And I told the homie, like, damn, he I have five white roommates. I'm like, damn, what's wrong with me? They like, damn, man, you look like the movies. <laughs> you like a gangbanger in the movies. I'm sagging 40 jeans, 5X white tee, <laughs> go all the way down to my knees. I'm wearing Air Force Ones. They was like, you need to change your style. I started wearing rainbows. Jeans got tighter. <laughs> Yo, that is so funny. <laughs> hey, like, How quick just... did that transition happen for you? Real quick. Oh, I'm like, Next I need. Day. It was like, it may be a week once I got that check. I'm like, take me to the mall where y'all shop at. Went to like uh, Albert Cumming and Fit. What's, what is Albert that? Albert and Fit? <laughs> yeah, never heard of. And then it was over with after that. You know what I'm saying? Shit. That same girl wasn't saying you no more. He said, he loved. Oh, that same girl, yeah, she man, shit. wanted to talk to me. Oh, I had to hit her with the same move. I was like, oh, don't touch me. She's like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm just fucking with you. What's Come good? Happy Halloween, Happy squad. Halloween. Happy Halloween. The finale is officially here, and the weather. <laughs> Garrett's fucking, Garrett just goes, got in a stance. Wait, boys, want to talk about our our, uh, our costumes real quick, real quick. Gee, are you a UFC champion, brother? I am Iron Mike. Oh, you're Iron Mike. I'm Iron Mike. The American, all-American boy. All-American boy. Future uh, defeater of Conor McGregor. Absolutely. Ooh. I am uh, Stanley Yelnats from the movie Holes. Phenomenal movie. I got my sploosh. Uh, with body armor water. Yep, and I'm digging holes after after we're done. That's a good, that's a good, well put together costume. I'm a wizard. I have my orb here. Look into it and ponder what life secrets are for you. JP, I think we all know what you are. Yeah, I don't really need to say much about it. One of the greatest authors of all time. Somebody that's inspired me a lot. JK Rowling. Yep. Green eggs and ham. And Delaney, before we force you to take your mask off, what are you? I'm Dink, lost brother of Doink. If you know who that is, you'll know that I've been in Twisted Metal since six years old. Well, Compton, what are you? I am a uh, Michigan Wolverine. You're a Michigan man. After last week has unfolded. Hey, run, run, run. Check run. It's going to be a run. After last week has unfolded, I thought it was a great time to break out. Put the use the Michigan jersey that they made for me. I got the uh, wrist coaches on. It says, look at coach. The other one says it's either run or pass. I got the little tape over here. Asterisk 7-0. and oh. Scully. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I got the cleats on. I'm a Michigan. I'm a Michigan football player. Max, victory cigars. Who brought them out? I did. That I a did. boy. You brought them out? I, I bought them the night before. I had our equipment guy. You know Adam. I texted him, and he, they got, end up getting three boxes. So it was about 100 cigars. I got cutters, lighters, all that. Shot them over a Venmo. They got it all set up and then he just he texts me the day of the game he's like what do you want me to do with the cigars i'm like right before you know right before we come in after the win we got to bring those bitches out and pass them around the locker room and literally all hundred cigars were smoked in the locker room from equipment guys to staff literally everybody was lighting up in there and it was it was legendary victory cigar man i wonder what that locker room smelled like <laughs> So, you know, waking up success. Yeah. It's going down the hallways, you could see smoke. Like everywhere was it was smoked out, but it was it was awesome. I enjoy being safe, but I also enjoy keeping the seatbelt off for the first 15 seconds of the our car ride together so I can get the whole you put the seatbelt off for me. <laughs>
from the from Compton. No, but, and like a pull, like a doll pull string, dude. Keep, keep it a secret <laughs> for me. Hey, the belt? first thing, it's like an alarm you know goes off. In like your head. I don't want to say it. That is to me. That's in the category to get you beat. When that when that beeping starts to happen, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I really hope they they dial this in. I hope they heard that. And then once it goes, probably seven seconds after the beep, no, after the ding, I'm like, okay, I gotta say something. Seven seconds, you're you're in the third ding by then. Yeah. You yeah. do the you do the pull. You pull your seatbelt out. I don't know. Is it? There's only two of us here. And it only happens in the front seats. If you're in the back and you don't have your seatbelt on, you're all good. But yeah, you're in the yeah, passenger. You're, you're good to die. Yeah. <laughs> you want to do what you want with yeah. your safety. That's fine. But just don't annoy my ears. <laughs> yeah. Oh, is that, yeah, yeah. Oh, is that me? You just got waffle. Yeah. Yeah. I got waffle. Barely. <laughs> yeah, barely. I feel like waffle. Yeah. Waffle. In Will's relationship, I don't know if it's actually I, bad. No, or good, you're right. You're, 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 you're like calling it. The, like, it happened with the baby. Happened, didn't it? Something happened the other day. She just started barking. She saw something across the street out the window and just starts barking. I'm like, Waffles, shut the fuck up, Yo, man. Yo, that is so real. And then I look over to try. I'm like, ah, I'm just ready for her time to come. <laughs> <laughs> two and a half. But it, it's like to the point, like we know the relationship just is where it's at. And so I like like making more extreme jokes because Charles like, yo, you hate waffle. I'm like, I don't hate waffle. But then sometimes like, God damn it, waffle. Just nothing's happening out there. <laughs> waffle is now just a roommate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. A roommate you don't like. She Never cleans up after themselves. Stress sheds. Like she like stress sheds. Yeah. What's she stress about? Everything, bro. I got waffle. Like this gate is not going to kill you. Go past the gate where it's just, it's it lives in our house. The kids gate. Dude, I got one. I posted her last week on my story because she was like trying to like jump up on the couch and couldn't. And I was like, Waffle, what are you doing? Like, just jump up on the couch. And she's like, like looks over at me. Now she's got them fangs that like come up over her. You get really underbite. You can really see that relationship going downhill. I know. You could. You know, and and, and I, I heard like a lot of people, you know, talking about finding the right person to settle down with. It's not find the right person, dude. It's become the right person. Yeah. You attract people who are uh, as healthy emotionally mentally as as we are mm -hmm. it's like <clears throat> like uh water meets the same level of water you know like we attract the people who are as healthy as we are and if we become healthy we attract healthy and uh and now i'm engaged to be married and i put in the work and and, and i still don't have the distractions of chasing pussy around like i don't have the distractions of being wasted drinking and doing drugs like i, I literally don't waste time you know, like I don't waste time on shit. Like I'm pretty largely always just laser focused on what I want to accomplish. And now I've got this great life partner who helps me accomplish. Getting into recovery, it's kind of like getting into a swimming pool. Thinking about getting in a swimming pool and dipping your toe in the water and your toe tells you that water's cold and you don't want to get in. And if you think you're going to go around to the shallow end and walk down the stairs and then gradually get into the swimming pool, you're fooling yourself. It's never going to happen. Like we all know that the way to get in that pool is to jump all the way into the deep end there's no way around it when you land in that water your first thought is wow it's cold but we can all also relate to that it's pretty quick it's shockingly quick how how fast you acclimate now the problem with this analogy particularly as it relates to me telling it to bam is that we can all understand that you just cannot go around shoving people into pools and expecting them to thank you for it, let alone stay in. And I tried to shove Bam in the pool, man, and, and he just doesn't want to be in the pool. You're in the podcast business, and you have a guest, and Peloton calls you. This guy, Robert Kennedy Jr., is a, is a, uh, is a Democrat. I don't know Robert Kennedy Jr. I've seen his videos. What about Robert Kennedy Jr. would make your pompous, arrogant, an ass, pick up a phone, bike riding, and ass. tell somebody else you better not like like this guy's fucking Hitler, some horrible fucking human being that walks the face of the earth. He's a fucking Kennedy. He's a smart guy. He has his own beliefs and his values. His podcast has to come down. You sell stationary bikes for a fucking living. You are a fucking clown. There is something mentally fucking unstable about you that you have the balls to pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them to take another person, another fucking guy podcast down really wrap your head around that do you know what a fucking absolute pompous arrogant i don't, I don't even have the rest of the words for this <laughs> <guy>. <laughs> like let this man cook yeah it's he just so, kind of sitting yeah. there like yeah it's, it's 
fucking mind boggling to me that you could be that arrogant. How did you become where you're choosing people over business? I don't ever choose money over people ever. Mm -hmm. The best example I can give you is going through COVID is no matter what goes on, we're going to go through a lot of hard times. We went through the, uh, you know, the crash in 08 and 09. We never laid our people off. All these people that are in this building strap up and go to battle with me every day. So the UFC is this fucking battleship and we're cruising and we're fighting the fight every day. Some people have been here for 10, 15, 20 years. So the way that I am, and we're either all going down together or we're not going down at all. That's just the way that I'm fucking wired and the way that I look at it. And when I look at my employees, so think about this, and this is the way that I look at it. How many games have they missed that their kids played? How many performances have they missed that their kids performed in at school? How many hours did they miss playing with their fucking kids and all this kind of shit? These are the things that I think about. And we hit some hard times and that's it. And what goes out the window is all the shit that you've done for the company. All goes out right out the fucking window that shit not with me i don't forget i don't ever forget hey was was he was he uh who's like your inspiration behind all of this sunday conversation you nailed it oh i know i know zach but is there, is there more no, out there that's actually not true that was probably the funniest thing you've ever said but that was not that's not true no no that was hilarious i just always have done that my entire life i've just done like i like to get in that weird pocket with people when i was a little kid i tell the story all the time it's before i knew right from wrong i was probably 10 years old i would be act like i was in myrtle beach and walk around with my cousins and we'd get in elevators with older people older people and i would act like i <laughs> or I was act like I was mentally handicapped. Uh, let me, let me, let me, let us take that back. We just, my cousin, we just had to put him. We just had to put him down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My first cousin, I, we just put him to, he died a few months ago, a month or two ago. He was developmentally disabled. No, I mean, that's, I, that's true though. Like I, I act like I was mentally handicapped, but I, I did that when I was little. That was like a fun thing me and my cousins did. We had to be on vacation and I would just walk around and like look at people the same way I do something in conversation, act exactly the same. I was 10 years old with, 50 year old people in the elevator and we just give them a little razz. We razz them. We yank their chain. <laughs> and that night when we're driving back after the Notre Dame, uh, Ohio State game, we're all in the car like it's late and uh, Notre Dame loses. So Shane is legitimately upset. Shane was down bad and Caleb were driving back and Caleb's like, man, this is a boring ride back. I need to get this thing going. Shane and I go out because the Taco Bell drive through was long as shit. So we had to go to the restroom, going outside, going to the bathroom. We come back. Caleb moves from the back seat to the front seat where Shane was. It was a peak good bro high school argument. Shane's mm -hmm. like pissed that Caleb's in the front seat. He's like, why you got to do this, man? Don't make a scene. You made a scene. You created a scene. Dude, don't make a scene. Get the fuck in the back, dude. I'll kill myself. <laughs> and Caleb's just sitting there like, I'm not fucking moving. And Shane's like, this is where you want to die? You want to die tonight in Taco Bell drive through Taco Bell drive through dude. This is where you want to die? <laughs> I'll die. What are they smoking like? Taco Bell drive There's a PT Cruiser. There's a PT Cruiser behind us. <laughs> gazing upon them. <laughs> I'll die right now, dude. No, they fucking blew it, dude. I'll, I'm about to die in this Taco Bell drive through right now. I lived on <laughs> yeah. I lived on Dale's okay. property for like three years. Is it the farm? Is it the the, yeah. the old like oh, Western yeah, town? Yeah, yeah. Damn, we yeah. hear stories. The Whiskey River Town. Yeah, yeah. That you was lived fun. there for three years. I lived there. Yeah, funnest times of my life. I was like a rookie in the Cup Series, 21 years old, living by myself in my house. I'm renting for the first time, and like Dale's a thousand yards through the woods, and Dale was still racing at the time. So we would get done with these races on Sunday night, get home at 10, 10:30, and I would go drive a four wheeler through. The the woods to Dale's house and get absolutely wrecked. He on that like is, six hours oh, and then one right eye there. a four wheeler through the woods back to my place. That was like the funnest years of my life. So Dale's uh yeah Dale's so much fun and um yeah it's cool that this is the eight bus. See, that is awesome taking a four wheeler just ripping through. Yeah, like I'm gonna go over to Dale at your buddy's house. I'm like I'm gonna get out of here. Like, and kind no, of just yeah. going through the woods. Like, no worries. I mean yeah. I'm just in the woods. He's yeah. the whiskey town. It, it it seems like it exceeds the hype it already gets. Yeah it's it's slowed down a little bit. They also got a couple kids now, so it's it's He's slowing down. Bit. But uh, there was some wild stuff. Stuff that happened in the in the town that was uh that I, I can't say. <laughs> you know you're fine. I can't say. But I don't know if you guys heard the news. We're top ten podcast on oh, Spotify. Yeah, that's, dude. Right. that's right. Top ten sports podcast. Top, well, hold on. Top yeah, ten. Yeah, just for top clarity. Top ten podcast in America. Oh, sports. Well, he's just saying if it's a uh, football, like we're talking all sports. Yeah. yeah, we're sports, baby. We do it all. Uh, yeah. I mean, thanks to who? Thanks, thanks to all to you all guys, boys. everybody listening, especially on. You know, Spotify, everybody who was doing Spotify <laughs> rap. You're trying to get love. Thanks to all the boys yeah. in the back, man. <laughs> you guys are the best. No, but you guys listening all day, every day. It's awesome. It's crazy that people I was surprised. Hey, I mean, I guess you like, always see it, Jack, huh? it's, it's like an expectation you always want to have, like being a top 10, but actually seeing all year long we're a top 10 sports podcast. Because sometimes I check, like, you know, I'll check like a, a, a couple times during the month just to see like where an episode might have landed, just to see if I can get a bead on how the rankings kind of work in Spotify. I know we're always top 50. Sometimes we've been fortunate enough to be like top Top five, top 10. So when we saw the 2023 top 10 sports podcast in the U.S. on Spotify and we're sitting there at 10, that, I mean, 
I was fired up. It fires you up. He's got to come on the show in 24. <laughs> like we're getting there. What, what's our next step? Do we reach out to his people now? Or so do we I like- I know one of his people. And they texted me over the weekend and was like, hey, I will try my best to get this in front of his face before the holidays. Yeah, at the end of the day, we will go We will go wherever the rock is. We would love to work out in the Iron Paradise. Right. We will bend the earth to sit down and interview. Because this could be just so much more than a podcast. You're right. Iron Paradise. Wake up. Let's spend a day with the rock and do what he does. The Rama boys. You say oh, do what, Mitch? No, yeah, diet of fucking meals massive all the all the french Those toast cookies. and yeah cookies oh, cookies yeah dude butter, cookies. but also if he I came know. to nashville and actually sat on this bus that Dog, would be, that'd be insane I'm, clearly iconic i'm just thinking that we will probably have to go to him and make it work right which is all good trust fair. me yeah yeah, yeah. I'll do whatever it takes i think it'd be fun and a fun experience a more fun experience for us to go see him and do some of the things he does and make a day out of it maybe maybe both we just gotta Rock, get you come to the bus we'll go to the bus and we'll you know we'll go yeah. we'll get the pj you help us we'll get we'll you back home yeah that's big time so yeah we're in to hang out with the rock to round out my bad is uh rude taking a picture of santa it's not couldn't get her going but you have like the, arguably the most adorable photo on the internet of all time right before she's about to cry <laughs> oh bro bro listen we we had a visit to the south pole it was not necessarily working out the way we were wanting it to and i was like hey sweetheart like you know give him a shot give black santa a shot i know we told you about who santa is so uh, i'm holding her i pick her up because she's she's beside herself and i pick her up i'm shaking her i'm like rude lee and dad dad that kind of like gets her like in the in the zone and i go hey i'm gonna sit you on santa's lap you remember that's santa claus we want to take a picture with santa yeah i said i'm gonna sit you on santa's lap we're gonna take one picture we're gonna take one photo and daddy's gonna come pick you back up okay and then you set her down and bless her little heart. She was trying to hold and keep it together. I was like, one photo. Okay, here we go. Take the photo. Take the photo. And she just slowly is just breaks. <laughs> and we heard him grab her. I'm like, hey, you did great. You did great. You did great. Here's Rashar Mendenhall. I'm sick of average white guys commenting on football. Y'all not even good at football. Can we please replace the Pro Bowl with an all black versus all white bowl so these cats can stop trying to teach me who's good at football? I'm better than your goat. I'll tell you right now, hey, Rashar. He got, hey, hacked. he got hacked. He had to get hacked. You think so? Bro. I don't know. Bruh. He, he just brought us back 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, he got hacked. <laughs> he got hacked. <laughs> I know this. He ain't blocking a punt if I'm sitting on him. He got hacked, bro. He did. He did right there. <laughs> hey, that is so he's been up wild. 45 this morning. He had to get hacked. Yeah, bro. If he's if he's hacked, he's he's deleting that. It's that's deleted already. That's a real tweet. And he already got 3.8 million views. Well, you know that's 3, gonna take off. 3,000 comments, 1,000 likes. Oh, but yeah. Let's talk about it. Wait up. Wait up. Most Promoting the game. Civil War Bowl. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. That's. Oh my God. <laughs> all white versus all black. Running back, the edge is us. Christian McCaffrey. Derrick Henry. Bro, like if you're going off this year, Derrick's got like 400 and something yards total this year. Like what we what if are you, you talking about? If you put Derrick in the 49ers offense, he'd be dominant. Number one, Kyle Shanahan's white. You gotta find a different head coach. The Steelers. <laughs> As it stands, coaching staff, us, running back, us. I mean, that's not fair. They just start hiring black people as coaches. Oh, right. line, us. Receiver, us. Y'all, yes. DBs, uh, us. So close. Quarterback, it could go any way. Either way, that's, way that's, that's, a very, that's a very balanced. Even in that. And so is running back if we're, if we're doing yeah, that. I, like, I, we, I think we just have Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, that's about it. Fullback. Oh, yeah, y'all got what? Uh, juice. Ricard. We got a blocking fullback, and we got Both. juice if we want to get tight end. Us. I get y'all that tight end. D-line is pretty balanced. I mean, this year. I, I would Pass you, rushers, us. Interior D-line might be y'all. Backers. White dudes. Here's a metric game. that we have to think about. Two weeks to prepare. I'm taking the all-white squad. <laughs> Shout out to everybody who's been listening all year long. It's been a hell of a year, boys. It's been a record year. Big one's coming next year. I know we're working on a lot of different stuff. We did, uh, this past year, you kind of, like, look back on all the shit that we did, like, with the tour. We did, like, two episodes a week, like, in the spring for a little bit of time. You look at Slips and Picks, the gambling show that Delaney's co-hosted on, or college gambling show, Bet the Bus. Busting with the boys in the year, booking guests, trying to lean into kind of like the NFL nature of bussing with Taylor and myself versus doing all the lifestyle interviews and podcasts, which we will get back to doing in the off season. Obviously, it's been Taylor and I's first year kind of out of it together. We've been trying to pour in and figure out what are where our lanes are, like doing the pro football football show with Big Cat, being on the yak each week, like doing surviving. Like we've been trying to do a lot of different stuff. Our bus scenes is kind of going through some transition right now. We have uh, Under the Hood, which is like our behind the scenes of everywhere we kind of travel, fun stuff we get to do. And then we have bus scenes, which is kind of the elements around the office. JP's kind of taking that and ran with it and threw in some new wrinkles. It's It's been kind of like a, an organized chaos, I guess you could say. But shout out to everybody that's been listening all year. It definitely means the world.